We're live. Oh, need me to go? Oh, no rush. For a, for a moment, I thought you meant we're actually live. I was like, shit, I didn't know we were doing this live. <laughs> put your pants back on. <laughs> yeah. Put your pants back on, then. <laughs> hey, gang. Welcome to the official episode 50. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great start, I love it. That's you, Doug. Oh, that's me. <laughs> You're muted. I was ready to take over too, guys. I was like, yeah, I'm going to jump in on time. And <laughs> He's muted. God almighty. Righteous, Teed him up. Teed him up. Righteous. <laughs> <laughs> it's your name, not ours, Ivan. <laughs> That's why you're not a superpower. There you go. <laughs> there's, a, there's, yeah. there's, there's a lead in. Hey gang, welcome to the official 50th episode of the Plastic Posse Podcast. As always, I'm joined by my wonderful co-hosts, Scott, Doug, JB, Grant, and Ivan. Before we jump into the episode, how's everyone doing? And what, if anything, are you working on? Scott, I'm going to start with you. I am uh, sort of on the mend, uh, been a little ill. And, uh, you know, we had talked about in the episodes leading up to Nats kind of getting organized. And uh, I've been doing that. I've been going through cleaning up my bench and cataloging all the builds I have that aren't finished and kind of uh, prioritizing them by which ones are closest to being done. Uh, really set apart just some time to get things rolling again. So that's what I've been doing. How about you, Doug? Well, um, at first I got organized. When I got home, I had 10 new kits and I realized I hadn't even put my Commies Fest uh, haul away yet because I didn't have my closet organized well enough. So I reorganized my closet. And then I started digging into something that has been sitting on my bench bench for a while. I just hadn't had the time to put into it. So I'm working on that little Bandai Space Battleship Yamato Cosmo Zero. Um, I actually saw one that was on display at, at Nats. One was entered in the sci-fi category. So I, I'm actually almost done with it. So having fun there. And I uh, pulled out a an old kit that was started years ago and gave it to my grandson. He uh, He's building the uh, Klingon Bird of Prey. The old big one from, uh, I don't know who made that. AMT. Know. Was it AMT? Yeah, it's, it's AMT. AMT. Yeah. And he insists it's going to be purple. <laughs> He's four, so more power to him. What about you, JB? I am actually working on Tacons, Earthsats M10. It's going well, which is honestly a stud three. And hoping to get some paint on it this weekend. Got to capitalize on the Nats momentum. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm overwhelmed still. Haven't packed away anything. I'm going to be definitely doing that this weekend. What about you, Grant? Uh, I've been actually really quiet. <laughs> I'm just getting over cold and a couple other things like most of us. I finally put my uh, Grant Mayberry uh, up on its shelf with its in its case. Proud to be an owner of that beautiful model by Sir Ivan. I actually started a, an ARL 44, the Amusing Hobbies French modern tank. Actually a great kit. Um, really fun to build. That's about what I'm working on right now, and um, so getting really interested in post post World War II French armor for some bizarre reason. Sir Ivan, how about you, buddy? I'm really sad right now. I've had to return home, which is not nice. I had the best time of my life, and I've got to return to normal life, which is not fun. But you know, the, like they say, don't be sad that it's over. Be happy that it happened. Many people don't get to experience what I got to experience in the past two weeks, so I'm delighted um and a bit like what jb said whilst the motivation and drive is there i've started working on a tamiya 135th Panzer l70 uh trying to do the whole night shift like and in roll steel texture casting texture i'm not adding weld lines i don't really have the chisels to chisel out the grooves that i need to chisel out but whatever uh so yeah i'm just working on that trying to get this done quick trying to use the motivation while i can to get some work done 
Right on. We're going to talk about the uh, last week and a half or so that you had <laughs> a little bit later. I am also very tired. I had to go back to real life and real life sucks and uh, work is miserable like work always is. However, um, I did manage because I don't know if anyone saw my picture. I bought three. Well, I bought two airplanes and then I was gifted an airplane by you, Ivan. Um, I broke into the first one of them, and it's a Yak 1B by Arma Hobby in little 172nd scale. And I've actually, as I was showing you guys earlier, I got it built. Um, I painted the cockpit. It's all sealed up. Maybe tonight after this, I might get some primer on it, and then I'll start painting it tomorrow. Really kind of want to be done with it by the weekend. I mean, I'm not going to go crazy on this thing. Um, it's, uh, I think, I don't remember what we called it, John. It was like a clean bench build or some something like that. It was The idea was don't work on any whips and just get something out start it and finish it and that's what i did and i've never built an airplane before this is literally the fir first airplane that i've gotten this far nice the triple p is pleased to be sponsored by tankcraft.com tankcraft makes some fabulous scale modeling accessories for your bench tank modelers let's talk tracks 3d printing is all the rage right now and it seems like there's a new line of resin printed workable tracks coming out every other day if you're looking for the real deal take a look at tankcraft's new line of 3d printed pro tracks they're designing and making these tracks, track links from scratch, and they're based on real tank tracks and or factory drawing. They're not just reworks of previously produced plastic model parts. Once designed, they're scaled down to 135th and test fitted to kits from all the major brands. I can say that these tracks are the highest quality and are super detailed down to the track pinheads. Layer lines are practically invisible to the naked eye and clean up is a breeze. Go on over to tankcraft.com right now and get yourself a set. Pro tracks are as real as it gets. Visit tankcraft.com today. That's T-A-N-K-R-A-F-T dot com to see their whole range of products. Remember, Posse listeners can use the code Posse15 at checkout to get 15% off your order. Time to send a shout out to our Posse Outriders. These are the listeners who support the Posse by becoming Patreon contributors. If you would like to support the Triple P and become a plastic Posse Outrider, it's really easy. Just head on over to our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash plastic posse, and set up a recurring donation there. You can also donate any amount you like, and this really helps us uh, supporting offsetting costs and bringing the Triple P to you. There are three different tiers to support, and they start as little as $1 per month. Starting with the top tier are awesome deputy marshals. We have Chris Toadman Hughes, Model Doc, Doug Reed, Greg James, Dan Knopfel, Les Workala, B Colt 1911, John Everett, Josh Buck, Luke Carswell, Thomas Bannock, Mark Bradley, Zach Pease, Joel Munson, Josh Orr, Eric Brubaker, David Brian Bridges, Ethan Oddmill, Jared Cow, JC Osborne, AJC, hey Mike Talley, Steve Baker, Bruce the Model Noob, Jeremy Moore, and Rick Cooper. Next, we have our Posse Foreman, Previous Seat, Enrique Perriam, Ian Bonner, Lee Fogel, Mr. Grizz, Rob Burnside, Martin Drayton, The Voice of Bob, Steve Schaefer, Steve Munsell, Matthew Johnston, John Vitkus, Jamie Stokes, Craig Jarbo, Mike Bird, Jeremy Elliott, Mediocre Middle-Aged Modeler, Eric Daglish, Rick Lewis, Paul Wheeler, and Eric Semmelmeyer. Lastly, but not least, we have the Posse Outriders, Lynn, Neil, Jackson, Chris, Robert, Brian, Matthew, David, Zach, Ashley, and Jamie. Well done, deputies. Really appreciate your support. Just a reminder, the Posse is one of several scale modeling podcasts out there. We are a member of a group of great podcasts. And if you would like to see the list of these podcasts, plus some other social media content creators, please head on over to modelpodcast.com. You will find links to them all. It's finally time to dig into the topic we've all been waiting for, the US IPMS National Convention. I say the National Convention for us, it was there was a lot before that, um, and it was a really eventful 14 days or so. So let's first talk about Ivan's trip to the States. Getting there wasn't nice, I'll be honest. Um, I was supposed to fly business class and I was stuck on Erlingus economy for eight hours. Not nice at all. Getting back was worse. But yeah, it's, it was one of those, I don't know if you all remember, uh, it seems like so long ago, we started our live stream with the geeks and the Plastic Model Mojo guys. And then half an hour later, I was setting off to the airport, which is just a blur. 
<laughs> I can't believe that was in the same day. Weirdly, there was there was all this drama going on about the airports, like Manchester and that, having like cancelled flights and massive crowds. And I know John kept messaging saying, "What's the sit rep? What's the ETA?" And I was like, "Actually, this is really smooth." Um, so getting through the airport was really easy. The only problem is to complete this trip, I had to do six flights. I'm never doing that ever again. <laughs> Once I touched down, though, Mr. Cool Guy TJ was stood there leaning against uh, <laughs> leaning against a pillar in the airport. And he went, Ivan. <laughs> I was like, that, that's a cool guy. And even my mum thought he's a cool guy. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just glad I can, I can die happy knowing that <laughs> Ivan's mom thinks I'm cool. <laughs> I have been fulfilled. That's all that. That's all that matters. <laughs> well, it, it, it's been honest, I wasn't expecting you. I was like, I'm going to have to message him soon and say, I'm here. Stepping out of the airport. That was humidity I was not prepared for. <laughs> Welcome to DC in, in July. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Your truck on the, like, on the other hand is insane. <laughs> and I heard you had a big truck. I was like, that's, that's a big truck. It's so cool as well, and it's got really nice air conditioning, and it's big. Yeah, I just i I want to let everyone know. Americans probably understand this. It's only an F one fifty, and it's not lifted or anything. It's just <laughs> a normal F one fifty. It do, it is an extended cab, but other than that, it's it's pretty normal, I guess, for the UK. That's huge. Yeah, it's like uh, I'm driving a monster truck. Thinking yeah, I'm driving a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you drove a car like that over here, you'd be called a. D so, <laughs> I mean, you get called that here too. So that's, not, <laughs> that's not unique. But yeah, first day did all the uh, once you dropped us off at the uh, um, the hotel. Very expensive, by the way. Did all the the cliche tourism stuff: uh, Washington Monument, Lincoln, Vietnam War Memorial, everything I could possibly see in the first day, and ended up bleeding from my feet because. <laughs> I did that much walking and decided not to break in new shoes before the trip, which is always that, wise. That was a smart move. I even That's why you're not a superpower. On foreign soil. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get that man a purple heart. Yeah, so did did that and then met up with TJ again the following day after work. Uh, went back to his. He showed me his absolutely incredible model collection, which is all right. He says, "Don't listen to him when you see it in person. It's like this. This is this is good shit. Um, it's, some gym, it's, it? <laughs> it's really good. It's a good collection, and you got a nice bench setup as well. Those of the viewers can't see it now, but I've been there. Um, it's, it's messy, but it is, it's not bad. <laughs> well." It's a, it's a it's a good space. It has everything you need. Then what we do, oh yeah we met up with Jackson the the kid kid number two, um <laughs> for a meal. I don't, where did we go? I can't remember. Uh, it's called City Tap. It's just like a gastro pub type bar place. It's good. Yeah, it was no, but really nice. Um, one thing I have learned about being in the states so is every single place I asked for a gin gin and lemonade. I did not get that. Clearly not a drink that's understood over there because they just brought me a full glass of gin with some lime juice in it. <laughs> Nearly killed me. Not what I asked for. Getting, yeah, getting there. So we we were up at three in the morning. <laughs> oh, <go> we, <laughs> yeah, that was our that was our big adventure to Colorado. Uh, yes, we were up at three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. My lovely wife got up as well to drive us to the airport which i think she's still complaining about <laughs> and uh i felt really guilty you shouldn't i don't <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh my god yeah so but i got there, tell which, story which i it, which i thought we had enough time let me just go ahead and, and say that i didn't think it was would be as crowded as it was and and they put us in the longest tsa line in the history of the world, I swear they were moving backwards at one point. I think <laughs> it, I, it was so slow. We finally get through that, and then we had to wait nine minutes for the dumb mobile lounge. If anyone's been to Dallas Airport, you know they have those stupid mobile lounges. Yeah, they're real luxurious, so you know it's a great name. Then we get to uh, <laughs> our gate, and the doors are closed. <laughs> and there is a fellow standing in front of us who is not in a good mood, talking to the, um, not flight attendant, the uh, gate agent. And uh, I was like, hmm, this probably isn't good. And then another lady came over and I'm like, excuse me, did we miss this flight? And she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so smug. Uh, that sucks <laughs> because it says it's still boarding right now and it's not here anymore. So that sign is not correct. Um, luckily, she's able to get us on a, another plane three hours later. So I've not got to spend a little time in uh, 
beautiful Washington Dulles International. Yeah. He had some Chick-fil-A, which was yeah. delicious, I'm sure. Even though we argued about what a, what a biscuit is, because they're on biscuits. And biscuits I'm, still gonna, not, I'm still going to argue with this. It's not bread. I th- but what I will just add is you've missed a really important detail of that story. Is me checking my watch every five minutes and you saying, don't worry, you won't go without us. <laughs> yeah, I did say that multiple times. And I freely admit, I was wrong. <laughs> they did, in fact, go without us. <laughs> but like you say, it, it gives us a chance to have Chick-fil-A, my first ever Chick-fil-A. And you know, that, that was good. The, the, the dipping sauce is delicious and the biscuits are sublime. They were pretty good. I, the, Hopefully the, the game, American uh, biscuits are sublime. Yeah, ah, Chick-fil-A biscuits are good. There's a caveat. On the way back, we had not minis, and that was dry. That oh, was the, the minis are way better. The minis, yeah. Are the, the, we got to the queue, and it's like there's, we have no minis. Yeah, the, the big one is just a big scone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a savory it's a scone. Little, it's a little more flakier than that. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I'd give it, there was lots of crumbs. I will give it to you that it's not as good as the minis. Yeah, the minis were. They were good. Um, so, yes, so we were delayed three hours getting to Colorado, which I, I like to think that I gave JB a little bit extra time. He didn't have to rush. All part of the plan. At the at the you know crack of dawn to try and get us from the airport. So you you're welcome, John. Well, I mean, funny story. I went to bed when Ivan woke up because I was texting him right when he was heading to the airport. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed now. So I go to bed. They land at seven. I'm like, I'll get up at five thirty and then head over. Wake up at five thirty, and I'm like, oh, they missed their flight. So <laughs> go down on the couch, and I'm like, well, I can't sleep for like an hour or two. So I can thank you because I came up here and started working on a model that I needed to get done for the show. So that that took me all the way till about what, probably nine thirty, ten when you guys landed. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the flight to Colorado because obviously my seat was not available for the next flight, and we were stuck on a. A 757, which is quite an old plane now. I was next to the widest man spreader ever. He, he was adamant on having his leg over on my side of the seat with his arms crossed. And he was he like, just wanted, make, look, he just wanted to make friends. No, he was like, if I pretend to be asleep and look threatening enough, this kid will not touch me. You should have embraced it. I'm going to touch you. <laughs> I'm going to sleep on you. Yeah. So just that, that nuzzled up right next to him. That was a, that was a, a poor flight. And because the seat wouldn't recline. My head kept bobbing and waking me up. <laughs> I, 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 I was not in the greatest mood when I arrived. But then I saw John. John picked us up and I was full of life. And it was straight to the mountains. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, yep. we hit the ground running. Almost yeah. literally. Until we it's, got stuck in traffic. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> One accident can screw up half a, half a state worth of traffic. But we got through it. And then we pulled into Breckenridge. And mm. the band was together minus one. That was such a beautiful place. We um, had we had uh, Jim Bates subbing in for Grant. I mean, yeah. he's no Grant, but I guess he'll do it in a pinch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, we met yeah, in that parking lot, and it was it was uh yeah. I can't. I mean, it's you, you're speechless because you know we talk over line all the time, and to have Ivan there in person and be in a beautiful place too, it was pretty incredible. And we took him on a gondola ride. Yeah, that nearly killed me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> nearly killed him, hanging <laughs> safely from the gondola. Yeah, <laughs> well, he nearly fell twice. <laughs> and when they did hit the brakes, he did go up and down. That was yeah. I didn't like it when he stopped. <laughs> stopped and started right. again instantly. That was a big bounce. <laughs> that was quite There's right. beavers below us. So you could just land it on one of their houses. <laughs> It'd be all right. And then Ivan, we went to lunch at Breckenridge Brewery, which you said was one of the best burgers you've had. That yeah, that, that's that's up there. That's I think the atmosphere, the long drive, and the fact that the food was amazing just kind of made it all like, yes, this is I'm, I'm moving in. Um, the, che- the cheese curds were, they were really good. Yeah, they were, I love they were a good nice. cheese curd. Mm, they were delicious. The beer was all right too. The three that I had, <laughs> <laughs> and the headaches that followed. I was going to say, at altitude, that must have been some nice three beers. I had a headache. I 100% <laughs> had a headache, but I stuck it out like a like a real man. Weirdly, though, that's, the altitude is not something that affected me, living practically in the sea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was amazed at, like, 15,000 feet. I was, I was like, I'm good. I'm, I'm good to go. 
<laughs> what is the what is the elevation of Breckenridge? It's up just, there, right? It's ninety six hundred feet. I just yeah, ninety six hundred. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. pretty high. That's way that high. Is. <laughs> plus, <laughs> up there. plus whatever the gondola ride. Yeah, because yeah. that's probably that the town. Another five hundred feet. You're over ten thousand. I bet. Yeah, everybody oh, did yeah. really well. That's there good. Was, you know, I plowed them with water as soon as they showed up, and made sure that Ivan drank water and Fanta. That was his regimen. <laughs> I but promised his mom time. that we would uh, we would take very good care of him. The, the problem is now is you took such good care of me. She said that I want to live there. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did my duty. You, you you did too good of a job. She can come visit. Yeah, yeah. I, I have said that. She's like, I'm not doing that flight again. I was like, I'm going next. I'll go, I'll go next year to help you then. Yeah. Well, then we got back to my place, dropped you guys mm. off. The palace. <laughs> House. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> so I, I showed you to your rooms, you know, got you, got you mm. bedded down and, you know, made sure you got all your little trinkets and things. And, and then I, I left you guys. I went and picked up Sam at the airport. That's and right. Then, the Sam Dwyer. The, the Sam. The, the <laughs> very. The, book. the, the book. very. Yeah. The newly married Sam Dwyer. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Sam. Sam. Oh, it's for, yeah. Congratulations, that's right. Sam. I, I did a, message, yeah, that was a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> I messaged him afterwards. I was like, "I need a holiday after this holiday." It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he sent him he, pictures he, from the tiki bar for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God, <laughs> and I'm at work, like waking up at five in the morning for testing. I'm like, holy cow! Meanwhile, he's <laughs> sipping, you know, pina coladas and looking at Diamond Head. So, <laughs> yeah. but he he was super great. You know, picked him up mm. the airport, got him in the car. Got back to my place probably around eight thirty nine, and mm. again it was another reunion. This time around Jets Pizza, which was pretty good. Yeah, we I think we just again talked the night away. I don't Great even know what time we we went to bed, but Insta Friends pulling stuff out, looking at it, absolutely <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> oh man, but it, it was great. Uh, yeah, Sam staying over and. In the morning, we had some we had some righteous donuts that oh, I oh, they, oh they were righteous. <laughs> those donuts were amazing. Yeah, oh. I didn't hear about those until I saw the pictures, and I'm like, yeah. "You sons of!" <laughs> <laughs> they were they were great. They were as good as they looked. Oh, even better. Yeah, the, they were delicious. The blue one with the little eyes. I was. Cookie, it was the Cookie oh, Monster donut. Oh, amazing! Oh, proper. God. <sighs> they were proper. And then, See, what? then what? We hit Colorado Springs. Yeah, we went south. So yeah. that's where we went south to the National World War II Aviation Museum. And Ivan got to see the P-38 that Tamiya measured for their for their model. And we had a great time. I mean, mm. it was an incredible museum. I, again, Ivan was, I feel like Ivan was happy at that moment. They let us pass the velvet rope. Yeah, And we got right. to climb in an M3 scout car and an M3 oh. half track. It's easy when you're just like they're from out of the country. Can we yeah. go? With oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, check it out. I have I have foreigner privilege. Let me in. <laughs> but uh, I just kept on seeing these pictures of people with fifty cows hanging out of trucks, <laughs> smiles, like twelve mile smiles. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> that is such a good place. I I yeah. love that place. Oh, it was great. That was my second time there, and it was it was just as good. It mm. maybe even better. Absolutely fantastic. I think we went we, to BJ's. We well, we took them to an, another American establishment, Panda Express. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, get some that American Chinese food. <laughs> I, I looking nice. at Ivan, check out those chopsticks at first. <laughs> it's like he was left-handed. Can I get a fork, uh, please? Yeah, he's like, can I have a fork or a spoon, please? He just look at me with utter disgust, like, get out, get out of my shop. I can't use chopsticks. I'm not qualified. It's not hard, man. You just you just hold them and, and do this. What'd you think of Panda? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was lovely. Chewy than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> we had Fort Carson, too. Yeah, oh, that's was, right. Yeah. That's right. We went down and saw some armor, saw Grand yeah. Striker. Do not put a tire on top of your Striker. <laughs> Please don't. How much do they weigh, Grant? About 500 pounds. Okay. That's, with that's with the thought. ride flat. And uh, TJ burnt his arm on an M4. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, that's that, God, that that sucker was oh she was cooking. Uh, it was hot, and um, I was like, I'm gonna be slick here, and no, no, that was that wasn't there. That was at um, Heartland. In, at Heartland, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna pose. I'm gonna look cool posing on this <laughs> on this M4, and it's like, oh no, actually, you're not. And then after that, we continued south. 
what is that, Southwest, hooked around the mountains and went to Canyon City, Colorado, out to see B.J. DeBecker at Panzer Concepts. He was gracious enough to host us for a day of mm. fun outdoor activities. And, <laughs> you know, there the group split up into two. Uh, I went with, you know, we talk about Ivan's pure joy, adulation, and just general happiness. You thought Scott had seen his children and grandchildren born in the same moment <laughs> when we went to the Royal Gorge and there was a narrow gauge engine sitting there overlooking the gorge. It was, uh, I feel like he couldn't walk maybe because the altitude, but also he was just <laughs> super happy. <laughs> but me, Scott, and Sam and, and Jim Bay yeah. went to the Royal Gorge and I'll kick it over to you guys to take off for what you did. Uh, and that was a great time. You know, I had been there briefly once before, but never crossed it. And we took the gondola across, met a very nice random man who tried to hang out. With <laughs> we just kept walking. Seriously, uh, we we could be in the middle of a prison camp in World <laughs> War Three, and John would make friends. I mean, he's <laughs> it's amazing. This guy was just like like John's lost war buddy or something. <laughs> he's in one of the pictures. He was even posing for it. <laughs> so no, it you was, are, man. Yeah, it was it was great. It was uh, these guys, uh, Jim and <laughs> Sam and John, were uh, pretty patient with me. But uh, yeah, while well, those other guys, will let them talk about what, what they did. But you know, the the gorge itself is almost fifteen hundred feet deep. I think it's like thirteen hundred and fifty feet deep. So it's stunning. And and so another gondola ride. Uh, Sam was a little bit anxious about this one. The wind was blowing pretty good. In fact, we got over to the other side and they actually shut the gondola right down. So there was a sky bridge and we just had to kind of walk, walk back on that. But, um, really stunning in the bottom of this really narrow, super high gorge. There's a, there's a tourist train used to be a, an old freight railroad at, at one point, part of the Rio Grande. So it was great. It was a lot of fun, really scenic, uh, Got to hang out with a bunch of uh, bighorn sheep, which I think Sam thought was really pretty cool. Yeah. They're just kind of wandering around in the park there. But anyway, what a great time. It was really, really stunning. If you haven't been there and you're in the area, highly recommend it. And then, uh, I've been in. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. So okay. while, you, while you guys were doing that, BJ and uh, Son took <laughs> us to an outdoor shooting range. And uh, our British friend here got to get his uh, his cowboy on with his whole six shooter. <laughs> with I don't even know what that was. A very old. I think it was. I think it was a replica, but it might have been original. I don't know. It's a very old pistol mm. with a black. It was a black powder revolver, which I've never even seen before. Um, it was really cool. And uh, old Tex Avery over here was <laughs> was just going to town. I got to kill a watermelon. <laughs> yes, he he showed that watermelon what for. That's that's for certain. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was so fun. <laughs> and then we blew another um, watermelon up. Yeah, and Doug was wearing the watermelon at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still taking it out of my hair, guys. <laughs> uh, it, so, uh, well, we put three pounds of Tannerite in front of a watermelon. Yeah. <laughs> and who shot, who, who actually shot it? Was that you? I think I, I did that it? one. Yeah. Uh, See, it turns yeah. out I've, I'm, 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 a, I'm an all right shot. Yeah. I was very yeah. impressed, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. It's always it's always fun to go spend some you know a nice range day, especially yeah. when you got someone you know it's not as accustomed to it as as we would be. And then <laughs> BJ took us home and made us a bunch of steaks. Oh, oh I got to say something about the shooting range. To get to the shooting range, we had to oh, oh, Ivan, right. TJ, and I in the back seat of of this old jeep and I'm drove us up this very. Yeah, no air conditioning and this very rough road. And I think BJ was hitting every bump he could <laughs> he did. as hard as he could to throw us around in the back, it up was and fun. back. It was a little over a mile each way. So that was fun. Well, yeah, and he, also regarding the steaks, he did, uh, he didn't just do steaks. He did filet mm -hmm. mignons. Ooh. And the buffalo, what, buffalo turds? Is that buffalo what turds. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> they were delicious. If I'm not mistaken, it was a, uh, Hollowed out jalapeno mm -hmm. with yep. a dollop of cream cream cheese. Yep. A shrimp. Yep. Then wrapped in bacon and then <laughs> oh. deep fried. Yeah. It's <laughs> like literally everything delicious and then deep fried on top of that. <laughs> I crushed those things. They were so good. 
that was an eventful day if the ride back from the shooting range didn't pound your peach and the jalapenos would. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, uh, I mean, a couple of the couple of people from the group, they actually busted out some cash and actually made their first purchase of the trip. And that's DJ right. It was gracious enough, I think, to give some pretty good deals on mm. his awesome work. Yeah, we got the we got the hookup for sure. I know I got a six inch uh, <laughs> gun. <I can't>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pause. <laughs> I got a six inch artillery piece uh, with a carriage. It's pretty cool. And uh, what, what did you pick up, Ivan? <laughs> it's, it's, it's humongous, and I have no idea what it is. I just looked at it. I was like, "That looks cool." How much? Some sort it's, of it's like some sort of railway gun of some variety. It's like, yeah, humongous artillery piece that comes with a crane. I'm, it it yeah. looks First World War, but I'm, but I'm not sure. I think it is. Yeah, but it's really cool. Regardless, it's it's a big piece. I believe that's the same one that BJ brought to Nats in Vegas. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that did that did very well there. Yep. Yeah, he took it last year and it won first, and yeah. then he brought it again to put on his booth, which I think he did very well at the show, which is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He took good care of us. You know, I think, you know, we ate and lounged and BSed and laughed, and mm-hmm. Ivan cried a little. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was, never stopped. It was, uh, that was a hell of a night. And, and we got back to my place probably around. Oh, you, you heard about, you heard about the drop bears on the way home? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker, Doc. <laughs> Good Lord. Damn, I thought we were friends. <laughs> and we, uh, we made it back to my place, and I think at that point, everyone just basically died. Yeah, and, uh, that was a long day. A good out. day. Great day. We all, we, did we also hit Aberdeen that day, too? That was, was the next day. Yeah. Okay. Next day. Yeah, so getting up again, I think we rolled out around 9 or 10, and Hit Aberdeen Books, and for those who don't know, Aberdeen Books is probably the premier military book sh- bookstore in America. I'd say, maybe even the world. Uh, it was, you know, it was another happy place for Ivan. <laughs> hey, we met up with Brian and and John Everett. Yeah. That's right. That's right. John came over, came over to my place, and rolled with us, and then we met the award winning Brian Krieger. You know, national award winner, local yeah, yeah. still. So uh it was it was great to see him and then we did Wings Over the Rockies after that, which was a lot of fun. Met the curator there, that was awesome. He uh he showed us behind the velvet rope and we got to look inside a is that a MiG twenty three, right, Scott? Yeah. I mean the cockpit looked brand new. The outside was mm. beat to hell, but Yeah, typical Russian aircraft. The outside looks like it had <laughs> hadn't been painted in twenty years, but the interior was, you know, pristine. Factory Could eat fresh. off of that thing. Yeah. And then we stopped by the Lowry Beer Garden, which is right next door, and another righteous time. Which mm, was- onion rings. Scott, <laughs> Scott ordered the largest pretzel in history. Yes, all of Bavaria could have been fed with that. I, I did. I asked the I asked the lady at the front, like, "Do you have a big pretzel I can share with oh, my friends?" And oh, they had a came, big pretzel. She came through. <laughs> this thing came. This thing came in like a pizza box. A big Jeez. pizza box. I just remember you're you're over there. You're like, what the hell is taking so long? Oh, order a pretzel. We're all, everyone has their food. You had your food, but they're like, where's my pretzel? <laughs> and then you disappeared for a moment. And I see you again, literally carrying a, like a large <laughs> pizza box. I'm like, <laughs> Scott, did you get a pizza too? Cause your lunch is on the table. And you're like, no, this is the pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like a two inch girth. It was the biggest <laughs> pretzel I've ever seen. It was, it was, it was chunky. <laughs> That was a proper. great. That was a great museum. They had like a two thirds scale uh, Star Wars T sixty five X wing oh, that was um, on display there. Then they had like a full like one to one scale Anakin's pod racer replica, and then those are both really impressive. Mm-hmm. And then of course the aircraft. Man, they had they had a an EA six B with a black tail that was just gorgeous. Just one right after another. It's it's a, it's a great great museum. Yeah, B one. Yeah. B fifty two out F-13. front, yeah, just oh yeah, yeah the just, Tomcat was cool. Yeah, an incredible museum, really worthy of a stop for sure. And then after that, we hit Colpar. Oof! So I was I was going after Ivan's wallet that day. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 yeah, he um he hurt it. 
Because <laughs> you, you picked up an IS-2, right? In an yeah. Italian tank. Yeah, so blame Night Shift. I picked up the IS-2 after he did his incredible video uh, build. It was a pretty good price, and I was like, well, why not? I'm here, and I can touch it, so I'll have it. And then I noticed, I've been after Italian and French and Japanese subjects, and they had the actual Tamiya release of the Semavente. Uh, so I know Tamiya also reboxed the Italo kit, but they had the actual Tamiya one there. So I bought that. And then walking down one aisle, JB just says, this wet palette's good. I picked it up and I bought that as well because <laughs> because JB said it was good. It, it is. Did You you brought it home with you, right? Yes, yeah, uh, over there. Nice. Unboxed and ready to be moistened. Well, on that bombshell. <laughs> and on that bombshell. Uh, no, <laughs> that's a really good shop. That has, yeah. it, like, UK shops can't compete because that stocks things that, we just can't get the amount of um, Gunpla stuff uh, yeah. and sci-fi stuff. It's just, it is head and shoulders above any other retailer in the UK. I've seen really and, good shop. And every paint you want too from every brand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really well stocked. It would be dangerous if I lived local. It's, it's very nice uh, to have that in my backyard. I'm not mm. going to lie. So, but that, that was a great trip. And, you know, after that, we, you know, shot off and stopped by where I work. I gave you guys a little tour of the hangar and mm. in our little airplane and then made it back to my place. And that's when we kind of just pushed the pause button and took a chill pill. Yeah, nice chilled evening. There was, there was plenty of us there. Smoked fun meats. Fetty. Oh, yes. Fun Fetty. Smoked meats. Mac night, and cheese. Night shift on the TV. Night shift on yep. the TV. That's a date night with the Triple P. Right? <laughs> <laughs> fun Fetty, was, Smoked Meats, and Uncle Night Shift. That was fun. That was really fun. That was, it, was, it, was, it was nice to do that chill before the big event. Just yeah. one night of, right, let's just chatter. Well, and it was great because, you know, Eric, which is a local guy, came over. John Everett, BJ came up. And then, which was awesome, we had Steve Munsell and his buddy Pat. Yeah, this is on Game of Thrones. Game was of on Thrones. Game of Thrones. Movie star in my house. Who would have yeah. thought? <laughs> <laughs> really and, cool guys. Well, they both are. Yeah. God, they were awesome. And and again, it was it was just a night of chilling and talking models and really having a great time. And, and Sam was with us, and it couldn't be better. And then my dog even liked you guys, so that was a big win too. <laughs> ah, Douglas, <laughs> Duncan, but. Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about me for a minute. Evidently, <laughs> Douglas, you're such a good boy. No, evidently, I didn't like your dog enough. Oh, I'm, so, I'm such Duncan's a knob. A great dog. It's such a great dog. It begins with D. Same thing. Oh man, you know, I think most people shoved off to to sleep, and then BJ and Jim Bates and I, we actually stayed up for a while and. Had some really great conversations around the hobby industry, and I think it was just really, really cool learning from BJ, kind of the ins and outs and production and you know production numbers and costs, and it was just great. And then you know crashed, and then then the real then the real trip began. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the the trip in which we were called City Slickers. City Slickers. Oh man, seriously. So, <laughs> For our listeners, we took off here probably around nine nine thirty, mm-hmm. and oh, but but let's not forget here. <laughs> let's not forget. I know where this is going. Let's not forget friggin' Scott sending poor Steve and the movie to Montana. Star to Montana. <laughs> we're, driving, we're doing the caravan thing. You know, we're all together. We got a caravan going to Omaha. We're on the first interstate on E470 coming out of Denver, about to hop on I-76. And I'm in the right lane. I'm lead point. I'm in the right lane. Got my GPS up. And the exit's coming up. So I'm in the right lane. Put my turn signal on. And then I'm starting to merge off to the right. And what do I see? I see Scott in the left-hand passing lane. Flick on his right. Swerve. Almost (laughs) crash into the berm. Fly up and get in the exit lane. And then I see... Poor Steve he doesn't even make an attempt. <laughs> He's committed to Montana. It's like the scene out of Fast and Furious. Paul Walker and Vin Diesel. <laughs> they lock eyes, and then they never see us again. And, uh, you know, that's what I felt at that moment. Scott might have a different rendition of what happened. <laughs> but- yeah, like, like, most, like most stories, that's about, about 33% truth. <laughs> 
the part about my car being on two wheels, that part's accurate. The part that maybe isn't so accurate, and Steve Munsell will verify. Uh, John likes to initiate lane changes about two tenths of a second before the change actually takes place. So I was in the left lane. I don't remember if I was passing somebody, and all of a sudden it's like, lane? oh, there we go. So yeah, I, some of it true, some of it maybe not so. But you know, Steve was pretty good. He actually got flipped around and and actually got ahead of us by the t- next time we got gas. But the next chapter when we rolled into the beautiful metropolis of Lexington, Nebraska, <laughs> and we went museum. to this went to uh, the Heartland Armor Museum, which is okay, although it's it was a stop. Yeah, it was uh, how, the, how they had it hotter inside the building than outside the building. Yeah, it was, I'm still yeah. kind of scratching my head about, but they had a pretty decent, a pretty decent collection of of uh, armor pieces. You know, all the way from World War II up to kind of uh, Vietnam era, and even even a couple of Bradleys and things like that. But then uh, somebody, I think it was John or somebody, said, let's go to Arby's. There's an Arby's in town. So uh, some of the guys got their food and there's me and Jim and Doug. So that's one, two, three of us. And we're waiting in line to get our food. These three local guys show up, farmers, and we can hear them talking. And they're saying, great, we showed up for the lunch rush, all these city slickers in front of us. And it was three of us. I can't it's like one of those three- people wearing overalls. Yeah, seriously. And it's like three people does not constitute a rise. <laughs> and then, anyway, and then we're having lunch and they're over there talking about uh, all the water in the North 40. And as soon as they're done with their meal, they were going to lay some pie. <laughs> <laughs> I've I really would. enjoyed the curly fries there too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are good. They are really good. That's what Arby's is about. Um, yeah, I'd go, I'd go back just for them. I, I would like to rewind just a, a brief moment and talk about the Heartland Museum uh, because we got the opportunity to climb in and around a Bradley. Mm-hmm. And Grant, buddy, I don't know how you did that shit because <laughs> it was tight. Uh, yeah, to get from the back to the driver's position. Mm-hmm. I had to contort my body into positions I didn't know it could get into <laughs> just so I could go sit in the seat. Once I was in the seat, it was actually not bad. Yeah, that, that's the, the driver's position is the best place in the thing. But you don't go through the hell hole. That's the hell hole <laughs> between the turret and the yeah. – yeah, so don't go through there. That's where you put all your bags. So the driver would – because the driver's seat would move back. It would lay back flat so you could go back in there. So our driver would take his rucksack or bag and put it behind his seat, lift it up. So he had a reclining chair. So he would just knock right out. And that was the best place, but but the turret and the back of those things. Oh, talk about claustrophobic and fun! Yeah, <laughs> had to be better than those T seventy twos that we were in, though. Oh, oh my god! Oh yeah, no. yeah. No, <laughs> you got to be yeah, like would, five foot two and like one hundred and three pounds to fit in those things. I'm, I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a Bradley over T seventy two. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ten times out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was the that was the trip. That was the journey. It was a, what, I think an eight hour ride yeah. and we yeah, lost an hour, more. which sucks. Mm, but, yeah. You know, we always forget about that with, you know, cause we changed time zones. And my, my chocolate bars turned into liquid. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> they were, I, I couldn't stop playing with them. Syrup. Yeah. Ivan's in the back seat playing slap the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I just throw it into oh, the front of the field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Following a big moist sack of goo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Put, put it down. Put it down. <laughs> put it Get down, Sam. <laughs> back in the car seat. <laughs> put your belt back up. <laughs> but yeah, we were able, we rolled in there. And then, I mean, we, we checked in our hotel room and what we left almost immediately to the Drover. Mm. Yep. Yeah, and that's where we ran into Grant in the lobby. Right. Yep. Picked, up, like- picked up our missing man. And I do have to point out one quick story too. This was, you know, it, it turned out really well. But at the moment, you know, I've never seen a human so depressed in my entire life. Model geeks, seeing Darren, he's chipper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got a couple of them. We're all doing great. We're on the high for seeing each other. And, and Scott Samer walks in. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it looked like he came from a funeral. 
And it was rather unfortunate. He had a he had an accident on the way, and uh, I felt really bad for him at that moment. And you know, I think he took the night off and he fixed his F four, which we'll talk about later. Uh, so he he ended up recovering in a huge way. Yeah. So his accident was he dropped his F four in the airport, yeah. and according to Whitey and Frill, especially Frill, uh, he said he looked like he was going to walk to the ticket counter. Buy a t- plane ticket. He's gonna and fly. paint you a picture. <laughs> and fly, fly all the way back to DCA because he Call dropped his F four. And if anyone's seen Nemo's work, you know how good it is. Mm. Um, yeah, he looked like he had his puppy kicked. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, yeah. we'll get to his F four later. But uh, but yeah, so we went to the Drover and oh. we rolled eighteen deep up in that mother and it was amazing we walked in like we owned the place and ivan what did you get when we went to the drover <laughs> please enlighten the listeners as to what you consumed while we were there so, so i looked at the menu and i was like mm, that's quite pricey a fillet is 58 dollars." and then said the woman waitress uh comes over and says oh we have a special of a 38 ounce tomahawk didn't even ask for the price i said yeah i love that <laughs> It was humongous. Um, I could have killed someone with the bone left in it. It was and what, big. And what did you do? I finished it. That's All of right. It. No, 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 no. You didn't finish it. You attacked it. <laughs> you, you, you left no stone unturned. Yeah. And you devoured that piece yeah. of meat. Yeah. You showed that meat yeah. who its daddy was. Yeah. Now, hold on, hold on. Let's oh, be my. let's be let's be totally honest here. His will began to falter about mm, I'd say ninety five percent of the way done. He's at the end of the table. I'm sitting right to his right. I'm already done with my delicious steak and, and baked potato and <laughs> again my three beers. And <laughs> he's getting he's faltering. His will is faltering. I could see it in his eyes. I looked at him I was like Ivan, you finished that effing steak. <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't think I can. I'm like, oh no, you will. He did, damn it, he did. There's starving people in Britain that would love it. <laughs> I also, I, know, I finished the fries that went with it. Oh, and of course, you had to get fries. <laughs> I thought it was a baked potato. Oh, that was so funny. The waitress walked after you, you <laughs> finished. I was at the other end of the table at the far end of the table and I was sitting there and I was talking to a couple people and the waitress went down there and picked up his steak, this plate. And it's, it's all you see is a bone. I mean, the bone is like, there's no marrow left in the bone. <laughs> there's nothing. It's just, picked it's just clean, gone. picked clean. And just the waitress walks positive. Oh, it's just, it was, it was sad. There's people crying in the back and it was, just, <laughs> uh, it was just, and the, the waitress walked by and she's like, she, under her breath, you can hear her go, I can't believe he ate the whole guy. <laughs> thing <laughs> i lost it i just <laughs> oh that was so funny it was one of those it was built up so much it's like oh nebraska the home of steak i was like well if i'm doing it i'm doing it um i just didn't expect a cow to be placed on the table <laughs> oh you did it justice yeah it, it, and you know i i do want to thank you know in addition to us you know, TJ mentioned earlier, we had 18 people and, you know, it, it was great to meet our listeners right then and there for the first time too. So we yep. had Andy Taylor, Chris and his dad, Jerry, yep. Rick Cooper, Sam was at our table the first time meeting, you know, Jackson and Grizz and Scott Hall, Scott Hall was there, and, you know, John's at our table. We had BJ there. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. I think Mark Bradley and his wife were in the room before us. And uh, it was uh, it was just really great. And I'm trying to think if I missed anyone, but it was a uh, Pat it was, was there. Yeah, yeah, Pat. yep. Pat that's right. There. That's right. Pat yeah. went, and uh, Steve Munsell's like, take care of him. Yeah, All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. So it it was uh, you know it was great, and it's almost you know maybe it's another tradition we have where yeah if we can if we can swing Tuesday night before the Nationals, and you're a listener and you want to hang out, let us know. We'll put you on the reservation. It was a it was just a great time. You know, getting to know everybody. That we had never met before in person and you know a couple guys stand out again all of them are super nice and yeah. and some of us some of them most of them actually became our you know close friends and we hung out with them routinely throughout the show you know seeing yeah. andy taylor and you know uh, rick cooper and again chris and his dad and yeah yeah it was just damn it was good it was an excellent social event <laughs>
proper just yeah. a, just proper. a prelude yeah. to yeah. the social events too. Yeah. So I, I definitely I definitely want to talk about that. Yeah, I, I think we'll get to the models, people. Just, <laughs> trust me, the models are coming. Um, you know, you hear talk about like why like why would you want to go to a model show for four days, right? Like more than one person that you'll see that online and some it's it's hard to explain what it's really like when you're there with literally your 12 best friends, right? Almost every single person I knew was there. And yeah, there's a model show going on, but it was just it, it was a hang session. That that's what it was. And when we were up till <laughs> almost two o'clock every night. Yep. I had to kick Care- the baby out at three every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, drinking beer, carrying on, laughing our asses off. I mean, it was it, it was the best. I mean, it was literally the best. I I had more fun that 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 four days. I mean, the 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 days before that were also equally as fun. But just the whole combined thing, combined thing. In if you're fortunate like we are to have be surrounded by awesome people. That that's what you get when you surround yourself with greatness, which we do with good people. That's what you get, and and I, I encourage everyone to do that. You know, find find good people to spend time with. It makes it makes life so much better. It really does. Because there was not a sad person there. Everyone yeah. was having a good time, right? I mean, there yep. all six of us here. All, all we did was, I mean, my face hurt from smiling so much. Like that's oh yeah. You know, my my throat was dry from laughing so much. Like I was up late every night and up early every morning. And I couldn't wait. Well, I was exhausted yeah. and just let it just it just kept on going. What was great was when we were there on Tuesday and, you know, on Wednesday, some of our friends weren't even there yet. So we mm-hmm. got Aaron and and um, I was going to call him Ivan, but it's Ian. <laughs> 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 I did that on purpose. Um, <laughs> you know, Aaron and Ian, they hadn't even been there. And, and we're calling them, texting them and, you know, just talking so much. And, and again, it's the, it's the ramp up for their arrival. They get there and, you know, it's literally the band coming together and going back to what TJ said, you know, our listeners are so great. They stop by the booth for five minutes. They don't leave until the end of the day. I mean, we had a lot of guys that, you know, pull up a chair, hang out, talk, you know, stop by anytime. If you need to dump your stuff, please do. It's, you know, that's the kind of camaraderie. That's the kind of, you know, dare I say lifestyle that we want at these shows. Yeah, it's Mark a, Bradley and his wife come by and oh, he brings us cookies. Oh, and those are incredible, oh, incredible, oh, incredible cookies. Cow, oh. Cowboy cookies? Is that yeah. what they're called? Oh, delicious. Yeah. Oh, and she is good. the nicest lady. Yeah. yeah. I, and Mark so is a, nice. it's just an all around solid guy. That's a yeah. good yeah. dude. Yeah. And his wife uh, was so nice and so generous. She took yeah. care yeah. of Ivan. She rolls so, up with yeah. her bag. It was like, okay, Ivan, cookies, just some <laughs> yeah. chocolate covered pretzel, yogurt covered pretzels. Oh, and then here's some trail mix. You got to take yep. care of the trail mix. And Ivan was well taken care of. So again, Jamie and Mark, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, Definitely. thank you. You you exemplify what good people are. Yeah. And then there was a couple of listeners. I mean, for me, th- this this is particularly humbling. But we had a couple of two generation posse mm-hmm. listeners where we've got the dad in the posse and we've mm-hmm. also got their sons and they brought them by you know we had hank Knoffel with dan Knoffel and his wife that mm-hmm. came by you know and then and then we had matt schaefer and he brought his son by i think his son is the one we ended up giving the tank craft mat to and the meet and greet you know charlie. um that's charlie yeah charlie yep yeah and just man that's just that's incredible and then and then all the all the Patreons and just the friends of the show that came by, came by our rooms, came by our booth. Man, it was just we we could go on and on and on. It was just incredible. How many and people I, approached you guys and said, "I'm here because of you, oh, because oh, of your show." Many. And and I don't say that to brag because no. because it's it is humbling, but uh, it's just it's just a neat experience to be able to meet all these people that that respect our opinions enough to give this, this trip, a long trip to the middle of, of the very, very hot center of our nation right now <laughs> to go look at models. And, and then it becomes about the people and not the models so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All, I mean, all the podcasts, the Moj, yep. you know, even small subjects was there, you know, the yep. geeks, Jim you know, and Barry, Jim and Barry, you know, Both. all the geeks. Is that, I I know it was Jim's first um it was show IPMS show ever. 
Yeah. Uh, was it also Barry's? It was his first Nationals, that I know. Yeah. yeah, I think it was his first Nats. He'd been to IPMS shows before, yeah. and it was great to see them. And, you know, the, the, all the podcasts have been great promoting the show as well. And, again, it was just – you you see these people and you instantly, instantly become friends. And yeah. it's it's no different than the corner that we had there with – you know, Munsell and, and Mike Macklin. I was happy. Nuke Man Mike got to meet all you guys again. And it was it was it was great. And and also the scale collar folks and BJ in the corner, you know, Jeff Hearn and his team, which uh, behind Jeff Hearn's table was Harrison. Super, super nice guy. And great and guy. I, I say yep. guy, but he's a young gentleman, probably in his early mid twenties. It was it was awesome. You know, he brought a Panther to enter in the competition. Really, really nice work. And he supported Jeff's, uh, you know, Jeff's team over there at, at Scale Color. So, again, the, the the best people. And by the way, we're only on Wednesday. We're still on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the craziest part. <laughs> yeah, Matt Matt McDougal, you know, yep. spent a lot yep. of time with us. Yes, you know, yep. Dukes, he was great. Uh, yep. Martin, Martin, yep. can't forget, you know, Martin. He just was such a great guy. You know, yep. yeah. Keep going I on and. It was so nice to meet another English speaker. It was. Oh. <laughs> he's you American. To, you yeah. want to talk about I mean, a great? He's got one up on me. <laughs> he 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 went to lunch with us on on Friday or maybe it was Saturday, and uh, he's a vegan, and he went with us to a barbecue place yep. for lunch. I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. Just a just a great great guy. So I want to go back and we need to talk about Wednesday because there was an event that happened or it was it was an event for Ivan. And if you know our booths for our listeners, we were in the back right corner and right right across from us was this little company oh. called Bedwater. <laughs> and they were releasing a wildcat at the IPMS Nationals. And we got in there probably around eight or nine in the morning. We started setting up and it barely got the stuff on the table. As soon as Ivan caught a peek out of his eye of a wildcat box, dropped everything he was doing for the trip with me and ammo, and went like a shark. In yeah. Attack mode. There, and he's he's smelled blood in the water. Yeah, yeah he was theme music and everything. Yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> there, <laughs> there was there was a look of fear in a couple of the Edward workers' yeah. eyes. Yeah, but there was he, you know tracks in the in the in the carpet for yeah that carpet is now worn down yeah he was pacing back and forth just staring at him like mm. a, a cage fighter like was about ready to jump on him he was then just... the other vultures around me started to gather yep yeah you were fighting uh, off i was like no 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 back of the line <laughs> back of the back of the queue please back of the queue uh, don't, yeah. don't be trying to sneak and pretending you're looking at photo etch Back off. <laughs> because then I, I spoke to the guy who's like, give us one more hour. I said, see, see, one more hour. Everyone leave me alone. And then I managed to disperse the crowd further when the guy said, cash only. only. I was like, yes, get lost to you lot. I've got the cash. When this episode drops, I will post the three phases of Ivan. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's the focused and concentrated phase where he's in his... You know, he's he's in that stock mode. He sees his prey. He's lining up for the kill. And then there's the second phase, which is aggravated, frustrated, and somewhat disappointed because he can't attack. It's like, you know, <laughs> see them. The, you can see them, but you can't touch them. And it's a great picture where you turn around and give this smug, very British look. Yeah. And then you got the CEO of Edward right there right. behind you playing blocker. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's, Game on, and Ivan gets them on, gets them all. And I think he's frozen out of a jubilation. Right now. <laughs> so one of the things about Edward and their Wildcat releases, they didn't have a whole bunch of boxed Wildcats nope. when they showed up. They had all the boxes folded. They hadn't been assembled yet. They had all the sprues separate, all the, all, all the instructions and everything. And they were sitting at the back of their booth assembling these kits <laughs> as they went. Yeah. They were actually gluing the boxes together people it was it was hilarious i was like then i thought well that's a great idea you can bring more kits that way because everything's folded down yeah. and, and then because ivan was there they needed a lot of kits <laughs> uh, but it was it was amazing like doug was saying it was like they were just putting the and they're like a little assembly line they're like screw a okay screw a but b b b and then you know transform it was it was fantastic i i was just gonna say you know i think that added to the frenzy as well yeah. because they put out only a certain amount Mm -hmm. And Ivan saw that and he's like, I did not fly all the way here to not get one or seven. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> well, I asked the guy, I was like, since since I've been here for four hours now, can I have one? And he said, in an hour. I said, like, no, that's, that's not what I'm asking. I, I want a free one. <laughs> I did not get a free one. And unfortunately, after all the fuss and praying, I actually wasn't the first person to get one because it takes time to put seven kits in your hand and then organize your cash. Um, it, it was worth it in the end. Like every, it seemed that everyone got a picture of me holding these kits, but some of the dirty looks I got holding <laughs> seven kits. They were like, "Oh, you disgrace! Leave some for us." It's like, no, <laughs> that's not what this is about. Oh, but not to worry. By the time we left uh, last day, they still had some left because they kept yeah, yeah. putting them together the whole weekend. They would yeah, throw they, a few they more five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's they sold right. most of them. Yeah. And, and that's Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, fir- the first day of the convention. The first day. So, you know, we, we set up our ammo booth and we went down and talked to Kinetic, who were fantastic, Raymond and Raymond and, and you know, the other folks at the at the booth there. And we were conversing about, you know, ammo products and stuff. And they're like, oh, would you like a sample to take over to your to your booth to demo? And we're like, sure, that'd be great. Tell them what you picked, Ivan. Well, when someone says, would you like, my eyes instantly go for the biggest thing I see. So 124th P47 Razorback makes sense. <laughs> so I was like, I'll have this, please. I could see there was a glint, uh, a glint in their eyes where they were like, why did he have to pick that one? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, got a, a massive, humongous P47 Thunderbolt in 124th scale. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was awesome. And then what do we do Wednesday night? We went to the tap room nearby right the bar yeah uh, but yep. with on the bench that was yeah Wednesday. that's that right was thursday. thursday was sack museum right yeah still, yeah. still on wednesday folks still on wednesday yeah yeah that's right we met up with the uh, otb guys all yep. the way from australia yep. they yep. made it we rolled 20 deep there as well I, yes I, we did the, 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 just long it was like the you know it's like a scene out of game of thrones with everybody around the table <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable yeah dave julian and, you know ian they they were hilarious folks and yep. you know we had a lot of other people join us as well that night and you know god bless their wait staff there they were super nice and mm-hmm. took great care of us and kept apologizing i'm like we we're either gonna bs here or we're gonna bs at the hotel so <laughs> it's uh it's no matter where yeah that was great and then we made it back to the hotel that's where we ran into the geeks yeah i had to kick them out at three in the morning that was quite a ride <laughs> You, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I need to stay. <laughs> but, but all joking aside, you know, we were talking earlier, Frildo, you know, Whitey and Darren, you know, Samo too, but, you know, Samo's got to get his beauty rest. Uh, we, the other three guys, you know, we, we pulled some late nighters and, I, I think right. my right. I think my favorite thing from that night is when uh you know we were talking about Whitey kind of keeps an eye on Frildo tries to keep him out of trouble yeah. and uh, we were talking about how uh Frildo likes to kind of drop some adult language on the geeks and Whitey's always getting after him and Frildo <laughs> looks on, over on, and man. these Frildo looks over at Whitey and goes when when do I use adult language? And Whitey looks at him with that exasperated look and goes, "Every single one." <laughs> oh, it was so great. Yeah, uh, those guys are a hoot. Yeah, and hell of a modelers too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to rewind to the, my first day of travel because I for some oh. reason completely forgot to oh, mention. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Models got dropped. <laughs> I had such a fun time. I completely forgot a model got destroyed. <laughs> So I'm going through US pre-clearance, which is extremely busy in Dublin at this time. I get screened randomly for extra security screening. Of course, it's random. Who doesn't want to touch this? So I get... (laughs) (laughs) Breathe, Scott, breathe. (laughs) I get pulled to one side, have my feet fondled and swabbed, and then... My mum has to take my model case because I'm I'm dragged to one side. When I'm done, finished, I know she walks over with a box that's looking not like I gave her. <laughs> and she looks very straight-faced. She'll be like, you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> I'm like, what happened? She was like, it fell on the floor. A woman, so you put them in these grey totes to put them through a scanner. And then it goes to a table at the end. Apparently this woman was in such a rush, she insisted that my product must end up on the floor. The lid popped off the... <laughs> I kind of asked for this to happen, because I said this in a previous episode. 
the three ton truck is so heavy because of the resin in it. So when it hit the floor, it imploded into a billion pieces. And to this day, there are two wheels from that truck still in Dublin. <laughs> um, so, so that model was a goner, but it didn't matter because we used the 135th uh, North Africa figure and we'll, we'll get to that bit later, why that kind of turned out to be a, a good thing. No, you owe yeah. you owe TJ. You owe TJ. I do. I am. I am big. <laughs> well, so I mean that that's a good segue. So I, I guess we can start talking about the contest. Yeah. All right, so how many models were in the contest, John? Do you know, I a think. little over twenty eight hundred entrants, which was the from statistics I've seen was the fourth largest show. And that was that was entrants like people. That, that was, was that's not en- individual models. That was. So it was entrance, and that is individual models enter, but I'll caveat group entries, triathlons, and anything that incorporated more than one model, yeah. collections, was counted as one. So they uh, easily crested the 3,000 mark. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. wow. So how many things did everybody enter? Uh, I'll start. I entered 25. <laughs> I entered one. Which one did you enter? <laughs> I entered my North Africa officer which was supposed to be on the vignette. I got a nice little base from Bases by Bill, stuck him on there, entered that as a, in category 305B, 54 mil or smaller, post 1900, unmounted. <laughs> nice who's, and specific. Whose idea was that? <laughs> that was your idea. It was my idea. It was. Because I was so distraught. I was like, I'm not bothering. I'm not entering. Don't like competitions anymore. <laughs> and you're like, it's fine. We'll recover. And, and we, we recovered. Did, we did exactly what I said we would do. We will go stop by bases by Bill. We will buy a little plinth. We will mount him to said plinth. We will enter it in figures. And we did that exact thing. Yep. You're welcome. Yes, we did. <laughs> Grant, how many things did you enter? Uh, I entered eight. Eight. Doug? Just just one, not counting my group build entry. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Scott, you didn't bring anything, did you? Just the group build entry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I meant individual, which I don't know why, because you were, yeah. you tried to do that crap last year and you were holding out on it. <laughs> <laughs> bring an award winning model. You should have brought your Samoa. <laughs> you should have brought your Samoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. John, so, uh, JB? Oh, yeah. I took yeah. about a dozen, I think, a dozen mm-hmm. or so. Uh, you know, I, you know, one of them, uh, you know, according to Aaron Cook's been around the circuit for about three years now. <laughs> so, uh, that vignette's finally retired. Didn't win anything. So uh, that one's going back in the basement. Yeah, for our listeners, I'm sitting there and, you know, we're talking about, oh, what we brought. And, you know, I used to live near Aaron in, in the uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania area. And I built a vignette back in 2019. And I, I thought I only took the one show. Apparently it was two. So I owe him a dollar. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, he's calling me out for like trying to just you know milk this thing as much as I can. <laughs> like, dude, it hasn't came to a Nats before. I didn't drive last year. Give me a break. <laughs> and uh yeah, and I and I said, it's only been the one show and then what do you know? He's you know, you know, doc you know you know, Pink Panther Clouseau like looking through his phone and then finds he's like, hmm, who's entering here? <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, fine, you got me. It's been twice. Uh but no, it was uh yeah, it was it was really good. I took about a dozen. So uh, Aaron did pretty well. Let's let's just go ahead and and pay the respects to Aaron Dumb- the elephant <laughs> and Aaron the elephant, <laughs> Mister Dumbo himself, because he brought what ten models and was it? But they were in they weren't in ten categories because he had there a was fratricide. Were, Three were, of them were, were in the same up, category, yeah. yep. and he won six times. Yep, out of I think what eight categories. Eight possibilities across different genres as yeah. well. He yep. had yeah, sci-fi, it's... he had uh, humor and modeling or miscellaneous, and then also an armor where he stomped. Yes, so, he did. Yeah. He must struggle to walk. Yeah, yeah it's tough for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, you know, the best part was, caused some kerfuffle, but I think it was a good thing. You know, Sam Dwyer took a picture of Aaron, you know, pulling off his 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 photo etch Fred and on his tank. And to be clear to our listeners, a new rule was instituted this year called the basic kit build. And it is written, uh, could be written better. There leaves a lot of room for interpretation, but the interpretation was made at the contest that if you had any piece of photo etch on your model, it would be disqualified from the category. So 
I served as an armor check judge. And unfortunately, I had to be the bad guy in a lot of cases where we had to follow the rules. And when kits had photo etched screens, they, and if that's the only thing they had, they were moved. And Aaron's was one of them. And I didn't move Aaron's, uh, but I knew the check judge who did. And, you know, Aaron came over and we talked to the check judge. And, you know, it's those are the rules. I, it, it, it honestly sucked. It was really just, it's just stinks. But, you know, Aaron, you know, being the, the, uh, the good man he is came back to our table. He's like, all right, I'll play your game. So <laughs> he came back and ripped out a photo etch screen that you cannot see. Let's all be clear. Yeah. You cannot see it. Ripped it out of the back, you know, bottom end of this, you know, SU-152 and entered it in VKB and absolutely stomped and took first place. Yeah. And it's because he was took it out. Yep. And he, he didn't just rip it out. <laughs> he put it in the instruction yes. manual with <laughs> yes, a big piece of tape where you could see it. And great big handwritten letter said, did not use this card. <laughs> and then arrow towards it. Well, yeah. And he, he folded the instruction sheet and put it in front of his registration paper. So that's all you saw when you walked up the model was... Yep. Uh, that flex and you know Dumbo, he uh, <laughs> rocked it that night. And, yeah, he and did. I, I also want to be clear: he was not forced to do that. No, correct. Okay, so I know when the the post went up, people are like, they thought, oh, the judges are doing that, or the no. judges made him do that. No, Aaron, on his own volition, chose to do that because it would have been moved to a category that he already had models in. Yeah. He wanted it in BKB. So if, if that was not clear to anybody, the IPMS isn't the bad guy here. The judges weren't the bad guys here. No one abused his model. Aaron did it on his own volition. The good thing he did because it stomped the category it was in. Yeah. And, and it was, it was a fantastic build. I mean, it could have, it could have done well in the regular category. It's yeah. just, you know, spread the wealth and, you know, try to, again, just try to spread out because no sweeps rules at Nats. So I, I want to give. Um, special props to our friend Jackson, the Supreme mm -hmm. Allied Commander <laughs> is his new nickname because that young man goes to his first Nats, brings a handful of models. He's an Allied builder. He's like, like me. We have a lot in common. I'm up against him in the Allied category, which they split into U.S. and then all non-U.S. So it's anything U.S. marked and then anything not U.S. marked. And he walks away with a first place in allied armor yep. at his very first nats at the tender age of 22 years old yep. bd if yeah. <laughs> if jack is not going somewhere in modeling yep. i don't know who is yep. because that's a hell of an achievement mm -hmm. and i it, that's not the first time i've lost that that sherman he brought either because i've lost at local shows to it and uh, for good reason it's really good i was happy to lose that that category uh, I'm a Sherman guy. I love building Shermans. I'm very proud of my Shermans, but he's legit. And my hat's off to to Jackson for smoking the con the competition and me specifically because he earned it. Yep. He did did very well. I think it's important maybe to talk about judging at this time too for the armor side. So for our listeners, we, there's judging teams, and then with armor, there's check judges as well. So when a category is finished judging, check judge comes over, you know, verifies the results, and kind of you know also makes them justify their entry, you know, their, their, their choices. And, and I think it's important for our listeners to understand that because even though it might be a judging team, uh, you know, that's, you know, full of random people, I guess you could say the check judges, well, I'm, I'm including myself, you know, we, we tend to hold, there's a certain standard that we're looking for. And we ensure that that standard is, you know, implemented, you know, from a rules perspective. And, you know, we just make sure that judges that are judging those categories are doing doing it right. And, you know, we ask simple questions like, okay, why was this first? Why was this second? And it's, it's just a little bit of accountability and, and making sure that they've, you know, thought out, you know, their choices. And, and it's a good, it's a really good process. And, you know, I mentioned this because at the end of the day, uh, teams brought their choices for best armor. And when I'm standing there, uh, all my friends are gone except Jonathan Anderson, uh, doc. So, me and him are standing there, had to boot out TJ, had to boot out Sam Dwyer, had to boot out Jackson, Brian Krieger, even though he didn't judge, you couldn't be there. You know, if you're in the running for best of, obviously you don't get a vote and you have to leave the room. And it's, it's actually a really cool thing where it's like, Hey, thanks for judging. Get the hell out of here. Your, your night is done. 
And uh, I, I took a picture of it because I, I just felt, uh, you know, I felt really, it felt really great to be a part of a team, you know, and, and have really close friends, you know, be in that position to be considered for best armor. And I want to make it clear to our listeners that I, I didn't judge any of their categories. I simply around, went around and check judge. So no home cooking, you know, it, it was truly done all above board because there's teams throughout the United States, very diverse. No one really knew each other, too. Uh, TJ, I don't think you knew anyone on your team really. I knew Kevin, but he was no Kevin. Um, uh, OJT. OTJ. Yep. So you know, for our listeners, the, these teams, it, it's just really crazy uh, to see that you know modelers, you know, who are judging these categories from a technical standpoint of IPMS, uh, you know, rewarding people that you know, and you know, having that opportunity to you know see there and witness it, you know, because they didn't, they they left the room and. And uh, it was it was just really cool to see. And, you know, you go around and you take your votes and what won Best Armor truly deserved it. You know, very well done scratch build, you know, I think major scratch build, uh, you know, painted very nicely. But there were some beautiful pieces in consideration. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to call some of them my friends. How were the were the tracks all right? I oh heard gosh! One. So, <laughs> I heard one. Yeah, we gotta I talk heard about one this. One had listeners. really good tracks. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm standing there and uh, I see TJ's whip it come up. I'm like, whoa, nice! And when it, you know, for your best armor judging and best best ofs really anywhere, when you go through that process, you know, you're picking literally the best of the best. Just because it won first in armor doesn't mean it goes to that table. It has to make, you know, it has to do something special for the team that judged it. And the team that brought this up. The gentleman came up and, uh, you know, I thought I was in like a documentary or something. Very well articulated gentleman walks up and, you know, nice long pause and like brought up the whippet. How, how do you feel about it? The, the head judge said, he's like, well, you know, these tracks, <laughs> these tracks, man. And he, and he does this hand motion. I know all the can't see it, but it's like making a circle motion and he's pointing at it like a chef. These tracks, they, they spoke to me. <laughs> they, good looking tracks. Meanwhile, you know the rest of Whippet is modulated, weathered, beautifully painted. Construction is flawless, by the way, no errors. But those tracks, <laughs> those tracks sung to him. And you know, I feel like TJ's new call sign is you know track track or something. Whippet yeah. tracks. Whippet, Whippet. That's what <laughs> call sign. Whip it. I, I just you know, I it was it was just a surreal experience because. I've never seen someone so intimately touched by the tracks of an armored vehicle that someone built and painted. So TJ, you have a lot to be proud of there. I think you changed his life. I think I did too. Which you know, hey, probably got a promotion I'm, this week. I'm there for it. <laughs> so okay, so since you brought that up, I do I do kind of want to talk about that a moment. Okay, I don't want to sound like I'm I'm bragging because I don't, I don't feel like I am. I feel like I'm a relatively humble guy. But while I was standing there, because I had intended on voting for best armor because I saw, I, and I was, I was, I saw Sam's King Tiger come up there. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yes. Yeah. And then I saw Brian's SU, whatever, 76i. 76. Yeah. And I'm like, that was beautiful. Oh, I was, and, and I see it. And in my head, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. You're going to make me decide between <laughs> these two models because and they're Jackson. both, they're both perfect. Jackson's hadn't come up yet. Oh, oh. I saw those two and I'm standing there and I'm like, Oh God, this is going to suck because I'm going to see these people and I'm not going to tell them what I did, but I'm going to know and I'm going to feel bad about it because <laughs> it, it was up to me. But they both would have won because anyone that's seen Sam's KT knows that thing is flawless. Mm -hmm. And anyone that's seen, uh, seen Brian Krieger's work knows it's flawless. Yep. And I'm like, I, I honestly don't know how I can pick. I, I honestly don't. And then this dude is like, I got another one. And he turns around and he's holding my whippet on the little board that I have it on. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it, the first thing that goes to my head is first, like, that's not even the best thing I have here. Not even close. So I, to me, it doesn't even enter the conversation. Bro, the tracks. Track. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess the tracks carried it to victory. And, uh, I, um, I'm not going to lie. I, I had tears well up in my eyes. Uh, that has never happened to me before. I, I've never won first in armor at any show ever. And the fact that someone thought that my work was worthy of being best armor, which it definitely is not as good as the tracks are. Um, <laughs> it's not best armor material. 
I was touched. I couldn't, I honestly couldn't believe it. And I still can. I still have a hard time believing it didn't, can, it didn't pass first muster. That's totally fine. Didn't deserve to be. Should have even been considered as good as the tracks were, which apparently is very good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. So I, I'm, I don't even know. I'm kind of rambling. I was very excited. It made me very happy. That was really cool. That was probably one of the the coolest actual modeling thing that's that's ever happened to me. That was um that was something else. To if anyone's ever been, I mean, John, you've been best armor. You know what it's like. I'm sure. Not, not at the Nats. I've never won best armor at the Nats. I'm lucky enough at a local show once, but you know, I'm just looking at this picture again, and you know, we got you know your work, Brian's, you know, Sam's, Mike, who won best armor. His work was fantastic. He had actually two entries. Yeah, there. yeah, he did. Yeah. Tony Zadro, another yeah. fantastic modeler. You know, he had he had two great ones, and then and also Stan Spooner as well. I mean, these are you know the you know titans man they're the best and it was really cool to see you know some of my friends work again you know, yeah including you know tj's whippet and and brian it's just it's just cool especially yeah. jackson too you know first yeah. nats first first place considered for best armor he, he, and plus he's he's just the you know the way of the future and mm-hmm. uh, it's just it's just cool it's yeah. it's an unbelievable experience and i i'd encourage everyone who's listening please judge you know it's not only a you know, it's it's a cool experience because you get to see things up close, but then also you become a better modeler, truthfully. And- yeah, yeah, John. To echo that, I, I I mean to give people an idea. You know, we we judged um, last year in Vegas, and uh, the judging in in here in Omaha was fantastic. A lot more judges, um, a lot more judges that we have. And if you need a benchmark, guys like Aaron Cook that we're talking about, guys like Sam Dwyer. These guys were on judging teams as trainees. Yep. These guys were OJT judges. Yep. That's how good these judging teams were. So yep. um, I think that's really a tribute to uh, the guys that were running that, including, you know, John. So Yeah, I will say in the armor category, I think there's a propensity to think that IPMS, um, you know, doesn't doesn't pick weather models. And, and, you know, there is there's a there's a sliver of truth to that, you know, in some categories. But I, I think I I, I re- I don't, I don't prescribe to that for the armor category this year. Uh, I, I truly believe, you know, what was on the table and what won, um, you know, it kind of, kind of breaks that, that stigma around IPMS and maybe it shows the evolution of the armor modeling side as opposed to more traditional aircraft modeling. But I, I thought that was, you know, you look at, you know, Stan Spooner's work, Andy Golden, you know, other first place winners, those models were weathered and they were weathered damn good. Yeah. And it also shows that those teams that chose those models were all different. So it wasn't like one team favoring one over the other. It was, again, the, you know, the cohort of teams having this certain viewpoint on what armor modeling looks like. And, and it was practiced very well at the nationals, I thought. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everyone's work from that perspective, at least in armor, I, the, the, the categories I check judge, very impressed with the teams. They made the right decisions. They had great justifications on why they picked the things and they did it by the book. And I, and I think from an IPMS perspective, the NCC has to be really proud of those armor judges for what they did. Cause we were one of the longest working teams too, uh, out of everybody, but it was a, uh, yeah, it was a great experience and I, and I can't thank them enough and shout out to Steve. He, uh, he was the head judge that took over at the last minute, Adriano, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Sorry, Steve, if I got it wrong, but, uh, you know, he did a great job and I worked really well with him and another Czech judge, Mike. And it was just a fun night. It was, it was really good. Really, really good. And then we stayed up till two in the morning. With the yeah, and, all, and all that was going on while I was watching Deal on Audio. Yeah. <laughs> Were you practicing for the vendor room the next day? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want to check in on this too. I judged this year too, but I judged figures for the first time. Um, I've judged Armour three or four years now. And I, I've... I wanted to separate a little bit from armor just because I wanted to try something a little bit different, you know, new, try and see in the different area of it. And uh, I can't remember the head judge name. Uh, oh gosh, can't remember the top of my, tip of my tongue. But um, we had four groups of judges with six people. That is massive for any figure, even a nationals. Last year at nationals, they had two groups maybe for the figures. And it was phenomenal. Uh, there were so many, we had two OGTs in our team. Every team had two OGTs and it was fantastic. I think there was a, 
you know, we all can talk about the hits and misses of judging and people chosen. But I think in the long run, one of the kits that I thought was very well done was not there, but that was my opinion. Um, but of which I share. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go ahead and go on record and say I share that opinion. Yeah. And, but, you know, we went through a process and it was voted out and I can't do anything about that. Yeah. Um, the way it is. That's the way it is. It was it was voted out, and it was a good reason. And I don't see the reason, but that's 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 a different story. But the figures that were chosen were chosen for a reason, and everybody stood up for those figures, um, and it was fantastic. And it was a great great time. And it was I was over in like a two and a half hours. I was done. Yeah. And it was and like they, boom. And they gave us cookies. Yes. Like cookies. massive cookies. Those were legit. Good. They good were cookies. big cookies. And yes. Then, and then sodas. Yes. So that right there is an upgrade from <laughs> Vegas where we got like hand me down snacks. They <laughs> the juice, the juice good ones. boxes, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so, going to throw it out there. Yours truly fought for that. So <laughs> pay more by the IPMS board, but you know, looking to a little, do a little bit more next time too. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I judged, um, I think, you know, I judged armor, um, <laughs> mostly 70 second scale which i love but um being an old guy my <laughs> eyeballs don't work like they used to um that's actually due to my lasik <laughs> surgery that i got about 10 years ago um because i i now i know you guys know i wear readers when i model because i can't i can't see that well it sucks and uh, of course i get 70 second scale armor the lighting is not the best there. I know they try, but it's still not the best. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm having a really hard time here. God bless Kevin Kelly, the, <laughs> the absolute legend. He's our OJT, so he's not, you know, technically judging. He's just there helping. And he's like, here you go, TJ. I'm like, you are a godsend. <laughs> Thank you, because his readers were the exact power that I use at the bench. So I'm like, I can see now. I'm like, thank you. I don't know what I would have done if he wasn't on my team. I would have been uh, holding it here like, eh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just want to make a quick point, too, to our listeners. Even though we all entered in armor, I want to make it explicitly clear that none of us had any part in judging our own categories. Correct. And, yep. and I had a talk with the check judge beforehand that said, hey, I'm entered in several categories. I will not check judge them. You're going to take them. So yep. I want to make it clear to our listeners that even though we all judged, we were very, very judicious about being sure that we had no influence on the categories in which we were entered. And I, I think even the teams that judged most of the categories I entered in, I didn't know those folks too yep. well at all. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it was, you know, at the end, some of them came up and, you know, the next day at Saturday, they're like, man, I didn't even know that was yours. And, and that's <laughs> the best way to do it. Yep. You know, it's, yep. it's, it really feels good at that point. And, you know, I, I want to kick it over to Doug because I, I have a great picture of you guys. You know, I, we need to post it for this episode too. It really just shows the emotion in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and our listeners can't see it, but it's Scott, Doug, Ian, and Aaron. And they're all just like locked, step and key staring at something. We're just like, we're probably I, I, trying to figure out what they wanted us to do next. <laughs> yeah, everyone has a look of confusion Everybody, on their face. Like you guys talk about this great, uh, uh, you know, experience in judging. We got our first, our first, we were in science fiction. We got our first uh, category. We judged it. It took about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we stood around for half an hour while they tried to decide which one we were going to do next. Oh, God. And then Come we on. did one more and we were done. They let us go. We oh, wow. We checked two, two uh, categories and they, and they turned us loose. I heard you guys uh, knocked over a model. Not not this team. Yeah, not not this team. There was another team that actually did knock over a large a large Gundam. So, but, oh, and it was I, a beautiful large Gundam. It was gorgeous. And ended up really in pieces. Gorgeous. It was horrible. I, yeah. I just like Ian telling you that story. Yep. Because he's what did he say? He's like far end of the table, as far yeah. away as possible. Yeah. And some guy not involved in any of it walks by. He's like, "Aren't you gonna pick this up?" And Ian's <laughs> like, "Uh, no, my guy. I am not gonna pick this up. I didn't knock it over. <laughs> and I, the, and the, I know the, if I walk over there to pick it up." <laughs> 
everybody in this room is going to turn around and be like, man, that dumbass knocked that thing off the table. What an idiot. So, John, the reason that the four of us are standing there looking like wolves waiting for a piece of meat is that um, in the 15 or 20 minutes when they were trying to decide, they must have moved Brian Shankel three times. Yep. Oh. And every every time they went over there, all of us were like, oh, <laughs> what are you doing? You're moving it again? You know, and for our, the, those listeners out there, Brian's Shankel is this massive, very limited, only a handful of kits were ever made machine and Krieger I think it won best science fiction right at the show yeah it also weighed three pounds yeah yeah, (laughs) but but they must have moved it three or four times in in 20 minutes and it was like what are you guys doing put the models down three three pounds on three very thin looking very or four four very thin very complex legs yep so I I will say because I've talked to Brian about this more than once I think it's very well supported it doesn't look it um, but it is the legs are all pinned yep. and it's pinned through the body. So yep. Obviously, I wouldn't put a stack of books on it, but uh, <laughs> he did say it is it is pretty well supported. And the head is hollow or head, yep. I guess, yeah. the, the top piece. So uh, it, uh, let's talk about the shankle for a second. So <laughs> I and I've told Brian this to his face and this is not even me being facetious. It's literally the best model I've ever seen. It is straight up my favorite piece ever. And that's not just because I stand Brian's work, because I 100% do. I, I'm a, I'm a BK fanboy through and through, <laughs> even before I met him. And then after I met him, it's even more so. Yeah. Um, that thing is absolutely <clears throat> effing amazing. Yeah. It just, it just is. Yep. Brian is one of the best modelers I know, probably the best modeler I know. And the Shankle, is yeah. amazing. Yeah. I believe it's it's German for pork chop. Is that isn't that I what it means? I think so. Yeah. So the makes sense because the yeah. top it's like a four legged walkie doodle and it's got a head with crap off of it. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know, but yeah. I guess the top looks like a pork chop, which I yeah. can kind of see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The fact that that one best science fiction it warms my heart yeah. to not only my friend win best science fiction freaking machine and krieger model mm-hmm. one best science fiction which mm-hmm. it was up for best for best of show mm-hmm. was never gonna win um yeah. steve hustad's triplane <sighs> is amazing I'm, yeah. so i'm not trying to take anything away from him it it didn't not win because it's science fiction it didn't win because the scratch built triplane was mm-hmm. flawless yeah um not that that brian's work wasn't also flawless because yeah. it, it it is yeah. um yeah i i can it, find you know brian's on facebook and he it's on his his website machine and krieger spelled by his last name c uh k-r-e-u-g-e-r it's on there if you haven't seen it go look at it the pictures are amazing it looks even better in person it, it just, yeah just straight up does just don't sit too close to him you don't want to dilute yeah, yeah. don't yeah don't be like ian and sit close <laughs> to him and dilute all his talent yeah that, it's a that's a, an amazing kit. And I know the story behind that, there's only like 25 of them made. Yeah, 50. And, yeah, 50, that's 50 right. 50 made. Wow. And they are not the best quality makes either yeah. because they are pitted. They, I mean, he changed out every single leg, filed, sanded down everything, pinned everything. And you have to remember, that thing's 135th scale. Yeah. That is huge. And that machine Krieger, and it's just, it's been around, that kit has been around for a, a while, but it, it is just a, not not that build that kit. It's been around for a while, but I have never seen a better rendition of that kit. You won't. Right. You won't. Yeah, I mean, you're it's, right. It's yeah. literally the best one. Yeah, ever and, made. and he's got a camel, which is another Machini Krieger, which is another beautiful build that he had in Colorado when we were there, and that's oh, another fit. The Lu- the Lunigans. No, no, the the camel, the the two sided, the it has like the gauze head on it and the gauze head on it. Um, oh, this. The, is that a sphinx? Uh, sphinx. Yeah, sphinx. Sorry, sphinx. Yeah. sorry. I'm thinking camel. Something else. Sorry, uh, Egypt. I got it close. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's another beautiful vacuum formed kit that is just not the best. But he produced a, a fantastic model, and you know it's okay. 
you know, it's, yeah. you know, you know, only best of show, you know, only best yeah. of sci-fi at Nats and, you know, can't and win at home. <laughs> but, <laughs> can't win at home, but can't, can't, win, win, home. can't win in Denver. <laughs> Yeah. You know, he's also built it at the kitchen table. I think we yep. need to acknowledge that, mm. to listeners, is that he doesn't have a proper bench. He works nope. at the kitchen table. He yep. finally got a spare bedroom, but yep. he keeps his models next to the salt and pepper. Yeah, yep. it's no joke. the guy right. is phenomenal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fluff Brian up a little bit more. So yep. strap in. Brian. <laughs> um, the the best way I can describe it is he bends those kits to his will. Yep. And yeah. he does it on his armor because he has a lot of scratch built and converted oh, armor yeah. too. Yeah. And you look at that, you would not know. No. You just wouldn't know. Yeah. I think that's the best way to describe the way Brian models is he he makes that model his bit. I mean, he just <laughs> does. It does what he wants it to do. Yeah. While everyone else struggles, and like me, I I fight a one seventy second scale airplane and he just does whatever he wants. Yeah. And another important, you know, we're gonna we're going to fluff Brian a little more. We're at the award ceremony and I think it's before he got his award and I'm standing out in the hallway because it was hot and I was tired and bumped into Annie Golden, super nice guy. Hopefully yes. we'll have him on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're standing there and we're talking. I don't know how it came up. And I was like, Oh yeah. You know, do you know Brian Krieger? He's like, well, is that the, is that like machining Krieger website? I'm like, <laughs> Oh yeah. And he's like, Oh man, it's nice to meet you. I'm like, this is Annie Golden. The friggin' Titan is yeah. like, starstruck by brian and brian's just like oh hey man cool nice to meet you. Like, the, the jolliest dude in the world yep. but he can also be a savage yep. you know the example that tj illustrated i think it was in one of our rooms we're sitting there and you know there's sam dwyer and there's brian <laughs> on either end of the couch and then ian sitting right in the middle he's yeah. like between two titans he's like man I'm just gonna absorb all this talent. <laughs> Brian's like, get away from me! I don't want to delude you. I don't want to delude any of you. <laughs> uh, and if if you have the pleasure to meet Brian, it, uh, hearing that in his voice is even is even funnier because it and it was just like off the cuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, Ian's all like, oh, hi. he's like a hyperactive <laughs> cat. And he's like, oh, I'm between the two greatest followers in the world. Uh, and he's like, oh, no, don't don't dilute my talent. <laughs> like, savage burn. Savage. He's still probably uh, smarting from that. Lots of aloe on that. Yeah. That was, oh, God. So one of the other activities that was a lot of fun was the SAC Museum. Mm. You know, TJ and Ivan had a really nice date night there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I promise his mom I took good care of him. And damn it, I took good care of him. We sat, we ate our lovely dinner together. We flew a B-52 together. What else did we do? Went home and snuggled together. <laughs> you guys didn't ride the bomb together. Yeah, I was yeah. Uh, yeah, you didn't hop on the bomb with me. I thought you would. My leg can't get that eye. <laughs> I, I even gave a really great video live tour, so that's still out there on the Facebook yeah, page. I forgot I made that. <laughs> we did he the whole to, museum. He, we got a lot of steps in. He got yeah. to see an, he got to see an actual egg plane. That's yep. right, the wobbly goblin. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, what I thought though was really cool at the museum, you guys probably echo it, is the the naked F one seventeen. Yeah, mm. that was cool. I, I'd never yeah. seen one. I snuck away while everybody was at dinner. Yeah, I saw the rope and took some pictures of the other side. I was going to say, I saw some pictures from the other side. I don't know how those got taken. Yeah. Well, I was helping the catering staff. Yeah. You know, I was putting out dinner Looking rolls for plates. And, exactly. You know, kind of, it's a, all hospitality. Yeah. That's a great museum. I got to see a couple aircraft I've never seen. First of all, the Vulcan bomber. As oh, an yeah. American, those don't exactly grow on trees over here. And then the one for me that I was really excited was I actually got to see the B-58 Hustler, yeah. uh, which is, you know, beautiful aircraft and never seen one before. So that was really great. I really like the Peacemaker. The Bombay in that I could live in is humongous. Yeah, I was, we, were, I, we, were, we were planning it. <laughs> I was uh, I was also going to say, yeah, seeing the, the, the B-36, yeah. that thing. Oh my goodness! It, that is so big. Mm. And uh, let's let's tell another quick funny story about <laughs> about the Sack Museum. So, if you probably heard as I think I already said it once. Uh, we were you know, razzing our, our good friend Ivan, 
the whole trip with uh, all the backward things that they do over there uh, in the UK. <laughs> and uh, we would tell him, well, you do that. And that's why you're not a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the, that was the constant joke. So we're, we're sitting at the sack museum eating dinner surrounded by awesomeness and uh i'm giving him a hard time and he finally snaps back he, well what makes you a superpower and i stopped for a moment i was like i don't know ivan i i think we're sitting in a hangar full of reasons why we're a superpower. <laughs> if i'm not mistaken if i can be so presumptuous and he's like damn it right and i was like y yes yes <laughs> L literally sat eating dinner next to a b29 yeah <laughs> Which was right next to a B-17. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, and that really shows how big that hangar is, too. Because yeah. on the other side, they had a 52, 47, the Hustler. And the, the Hustler looks small, by the way. Yeah. It looks yeah. tiny. Yeah. And the B-17 next to, you know, the B-52, it, it honestly looked like a toy. Yeah, it's tiny. And the B-25 in the back. So that's yeah. a, that's a small aircraft. Yeah. And it was gorgeous. It was beautifully restored, yeah. and it's really tucked back there. If you don't, yeah. if you don't look, if you don't go back searching, you you won't find it. Oh, and the SR seventy one as you walk in the front door, Ooh, hanging yeah. off. Yeah, that was beautiful. Just it was that was a good event. time. They I took, didn't know they took good care of us. The tube that ran down the side of a B fifty two with the little windows in it, so you can look out as you're trying yeah. to scurry like a mouse <laughs> to the back of the aircraft. I was like, who's poor? Air Force, you know, <laughs> PV nothing is like trying to crawl through a tunnel. Or one striper. Yeah, it's like 62,000 so, feet. <laughs> so I did a little bit of research. You don't actually crawl. You sit on a little trolley oh. and it, oh. Oh. it pulls you. Still not escape. any. It's still not any better. I still, no. I, I'm, that's a hard pass on for me. Oh, no, no. no, thank you. <laughs> That was a hell of a museum. And again, seeing the wobbly goblin, very appropriate <laughs> driving, had a gorgeous picture in front of it. Harrison, great. Again, the great guy that, you know, we met. Yep. Yep. We got a super cool picture with him in front of it. Very yep. appropriate for Ivan. And, uh, <laughs> a parasite fighter. How, how appropriate. A parasite to an American bomber. <laughs> Go it actually had a very big cockpit. It was very roomy inside that little tiny aircraft. It was surprisingly roomy in there. I thought it would have been a lot smaller, but, you know. Being, being able to sit inside a B-52 cockpit. Yeah. Well, cut away. I was like, yeah, I, I could sit in this for like 14 hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ivan, was a, the, Ivan was the pilot and I was what? You were first officer. officer. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's quite comfy. <laughs> and then, and then, all the way up. And then Whitey's face just appears at the window. <laughs> <laughs> And that's only Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. That's only Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> then we get into Friday. So Thursday, we had our first seminar, which was great. Yeah. And, you know, Sir Ivan Jensen Taylor, but we had some people in the crowd question. He's not really a sir. <laughs> <laughs> cool so, down, though. So I, I have to say, um, I was not expecting that many people in that seminar. Uh, I'm no. like, I'd probably be like 20, 25 people, right? Like, who wants to listen to me talk? Mm -hmm. I mean, who wants to listen to Ivan talk? <laughs> They'll come listen to JB, but like, us two, I don't know. And uh, then I saw it was in a huge ass room. I'm like, oh, great. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be like empty. I'm going to be so embarrassed. I'm going to be explaining models to like four dudes. <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> I walk in there and it is packed. Every seat's full. And then there's people standing up in the back. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay, I am not prepared for this at <laughs> all i'm not a good public speaker and uh i'm not good at shooting from the hip when i <laughs> speak in public but i think we did a pretty good job yeah yeah i mean they came back we had part two yeah, yeah. Know, ivan was a half an hour late, late you know. <laughs> for, good like, reason, for good reason i was so, getting pizza <laughs> Costco pizza, best the, deal of the day. Then. Which yes. I'm, I was near certain it started at half past eleven. I, I was too. Just, just as, just as me and Doug got to Costco and we were in line, you were like heading to the uh, heading to the seminar room now, and I was just like, shit, I need, <laughs> I need pizza. <laughs> I was just like, it's fine. I'll turn up well, late. We and were, then <laughs> We were late getting to Costco because we had to walk by uh, something oh. else that Ivan had to see, which like, was the Cabela's. Oh. I went there three times. You've the British like, redneck. Yeah. 
You got a restraining order at that Cabela's now, I think. <laughs> it, 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 it got that bad that the third <laughs> time I went there, the old the old guy who's in the actual firearms room is like, oh, the British guy's back. <laughs> like, <laughs> His DNA's on everything. Man. He's touched <laughs> every gun in the place. And then, and then you came back, and I think we made it where you came in the back door. So it was yeah. a very grand entrance. Yeah. And you had a great diversion because we had everybody's attention on you, but halfway through the presentation. I hate being center of attention. So I was like, oh, hello, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I had to walk my goldfish. Um, <laughs> before I start, um, I'd just like to say how honored we are to be joined by the Sam Dwyer from the Yag Tiger book <laughs> on the back row. <laughs> As, as soon as everyone turned around, I was like, right, I'm fine. I can carry on. <laughs> oh. That that, that, really that bird finger was lifted from the very back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, what, what also won favor in the first seminar was the fact I corrected myself by saying aluminum. <laughs> you, went, said it, that, you said it correctly. That went yeah, down well. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Now, Grant, you also hosted a seminar, did you not? Because I believe I was there. Yeah, it was not as popular as your guys' is, evidently, and I did show up on time, but I, I did a... <laughs> 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 Sorry, Ivan, you just walked right into that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did a, a small demo on, or not demo, I did a brief on um, Hillbilly Armor, which is armor that was added to our vehicles. The U.S. Army vehicles in between 2003 and 2005 in Iraq and Afghanistan. Some great questions were asked afterwards. Some really, really good. There were some really good questions. Um, I showed both, you know, mostly pictures I've had. There are some of mine, some of uh, I've taken from the net um, and stuff like that. I showed some actual uh, pictures of the Ukrainian conflict now, but you, if you know anything about it, the Russians are making hillbilly armor now. Because we always fight the war that we just, you know, the past war, we never fight the current war. So, um, but it was good. I had a great time. Some really, like I said, some great questions. Um, that was fun. I'd do that again in a heartbeat. It was, it was a great, great time. I really it enjoyed a, it. it was great. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd love to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think was, I loved your presentation. I thought it was very interesting. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's pretty I, cool. That was the interesting. As I walked out, the guy wanted my autograph and I'm like, <laughs> What? Sam, I didn't get that. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I want to you're on the posse and the new guy and all this kind of stuff." And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Could you sign this?" And I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> I thought he was I was like expecting JB and TJ to peer around the corner with their cameras like to get like, you know, <laughs> or Scott and Doug to start giggling in the back or something like, you know, it was gotcha a joke moment. or something. Yeah, and I was like, but no, it was, it was actually pretty cool. So it was, you know, it was fun. Yeah, and unfortunately, I didn't get to attend Grant. It's something that we've talked about, TJ and Ivan and I. Yeah. I think I think we'd love to see your presentation live again. I think it'd be a great thing to do for our listeners, yeah. if you wouldn't mind. You know, we no. can do a stream yard and broadcast on Facebook and YouTube to you know bring them in and, and yeah. show them what's up. I definitely, I like, I missed your first part of your brief, and I'd like to see your guys' too. I think you guys should put yours on too. That'd be great. I mean, because not everybody could make it. And, you know, and there's people that were coming up to me and like, hey, is this the first one or the second one? It's like, oh, it's the second one. Oh, I missed the first one. I'm like, eh, you know, we'll put it up online. And, yeah. And Scott and I talked about this earlier also. We talked about, you know, probably, you know, a live stream and putting them up online. That'd be great. Yeah. One thing I've learned is I'm really bad at doing step-by-steps. And Doc pointed this out. I'm really good at teaching people how to do stuff like how to draw an owl, draw two, draw two circles, draw the rest of the owl. <laughs> I, 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 I just, nah. <laughs> During the presentation, that's something I realize is I have not provided enough clear images. I tell you what, I, I listened to you talk to people for three days at that table. At the AK or the sorry, the <gasps> <gasps> oh, sorry. Look at me edit that out. Can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that. I don't know. I've got a little swear word sound over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Let's start that thought again. <laughs> yeah. So I sat at your table. I sat at our table, which was right behind your table, the MIG table, and uh, listened to you talk and she explained how to paint to many people that day. And I, I disagree with what you said. I, I think you can talk people, how to teach other people how to pick very, very well. He's good at it. Yeah. And you wouldn't be sitting at that table if you couldn't do that. 
Mm. Ivan, oh, thank so you. Don't, you. You know, that's, <laughs> you, know, you know, it just, that's, there's a reason why you're there. So congratulations. And you can teach people. Please. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> and you know, I you're think it's, welcome. I think it's also, uh, you know, really important to say, you know, Grant, I think, you know, with the plastic posse table, with the ammo table right behind it, I, I think that really was a nest mm -hmm. that, we really had so many people just come by and hang out and it really was a great setup and it, it was, it was unbelievable and it, it was, can't, can't replicate it anywhere else. It was, it was so much fun and giving away stickers, you know, Ivan, you're, you're a fixture in many places now. I already yep. saw one posted by John Everett yep. in his, in his bench. Sex you know, yeah. <laughs> There's Alice in Wonderland house in Vegas. You're right there on the you know, on the supporting pole in his yep. uh, in his room. So you are you are famous now, my friend. Yep. Yeah. Um I since we're kinda of talking about the table, um you know, we were at the ammo table doing some demos and I know John you would agree with this, I'm sure Ivan would too. I think we owe a huge debt of gratitude to jackson and yep. yeah. zach grizzle yep, for absolutely. stepping up when we had to step away when we were otherwise occupied um for putting on essentially putting on the demos and yep. answering questions and demonstrating the products and i know um when ian from from ammo reached out to me i commended both those young men for mm -hmm. what they did uh yep. they're they're both damn good modelers in their own right Yep. And uh, that was really, they did not have to do that. And that was, nope. I know I appreciate it because it made my job way easier. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were great. And, you know, it, it, it was great seeing them take their gases from essentially base coat all the way to finish, get it on the table. You know, they were, they were great fixtures at the ammo table. Scott, you were too, you know, I got, I got to throw you out there. You know, you were yeah. doing some great work too with, with the oil brushers. And, and I think that's what, that that it, it was just a winning combo, I think, yeah. to have us with ammo, you know, and, and our team there. And it, it was also a constant fixture for people that came over, like, oh man, you know, I damaged something, or they wanted to touch something up. It, it was really great to you know have some products there that they could try, and you know, ultimately walk away with like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then mm -hmm. it was it was great. I'm pretty sure Jackson and Grizz took some products that they can use mm -hmm. at their bench, and mm -hmm. I, I'm yeah. I'm hoping that. You know, I put, like you, TJ, I put the really good word in with, with Ian and, and I'd love to see them, you know, be more involved with, with, uh, with ammo. Yeah. Yeah. We became a bit of a repair hub, you know, just yep. the hours when I was kind of there working and stuff. Uh, the show was a little bit short on, uh, vendors who were selling glue and clear yep. coats and, yep. you know, they, other than the scale, scale color guys, um, you know, had a little bit of paint, but yeah, you know, there was a lot of people, geeks and all kinds of people coming over and, Hey, can I borrow some glue? And I need some tweezers. And so we were really helping a lot of people out. Yep. Any yeah. vendor out there, any vendor next year, bring super glue to sell. Oh, you yeah. will make a ton of money. Black super glue. Black yes. super glue. Yep. Cause they were always, people were coming up and asking us, for, we had a guy ask us for a mirror. Remember the <laughs> gentleman asked us for a mirror for a base. Oh, I don't recall that. Yeah, that was that was looking for the the rotating the yep. circular mirror. The circular mirror on the yep on the. It, on he's the, the guy. He's the gentleman that won the best uh, NASCAR. That um, the F one. Yeah, the F one. That was oh beautiful. nice. Yeah, the beautiful beautiful kit. So scratch belt. Well, you know, another point I'll pick out, Ivan. You did such a great job. There's a gentleman named Bruce. He posts on Facebook a lot. He is a world class modeler. He did a lot of Hollywood modeling. I th I think you really, you really showed him a lot of techniques that I I don't think he you know he was looking to learn and you were there to teach and and I again I got some really great pictures and by the way you look super happy in those pictures too. You know I think again Ivan found his happy place because he's it's your profile picture now for our listeners and again it's experiences like that where. You know, you've never met this person before, but you become Insta friends, and it happened at the Triple P booth as well. Yep, yep. Bruce, one of the nicest guys, and he was every day. He stopped by the table. Yeah, uh, yeah. learning something new, and it's a shame because he was like, "Can I buy this?" And it's like, "Sorry, but we can't sell anything." <laughs> but he, he was so enthusiastic, and he, he he wanted to try everything and learn everything about everything. Like 
the the perfect model show attendee. Yeah, yeah. such a nice guy. And you know, I got to give a shout out going back to Dan and Doug for the Triple P Manning. You know, <laughs> the, you guys rock stars. I mean, how many people came by the booth while others were occupied? And you know, it it's it was really great to see you connect with everyone. And then you know, Doug, you brought those prints, and I think you made a lot of best friends there. <laughs> and they were very popular. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, that went really well. Um, surprisingly enough, a lot of people wanted. 3D prints of uh, some obscure stuff that I did, and uh, Grant had a few too yeah. that uh, that he was selling. So it went well. Yeah, I was really happy with it. I mean, you know, again, Predator was like flying off the table. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. That was really amazing, Doug. That was that was really cool. Yeah, and I think we got to give a huge shout out to Tamia as well. You know, mm -hmm. Scott. You orchestrated that deal. Maybe tell our listeners a little bit about what we had to offer at the table. That was a little bit unique. Yeah, it was great. Unfortunately, uh, to me, uh, USA was going to be there, and uh, they had a scheduling conflict. They had a, an industry event that they couldn't miss out, and so, we, you know, we offered to help out. You know, we're all friends, all of us in this community, and we, we have each other's backs. And so uh, kind of at the last minute, they sent us a couple of kits. We had uh, one of the uh, limited edition chrome plated p38s and we gave uh, gave that away in our podcast meet and greet and uh we also had a uh, one of their brand new bullet bikes that hasn't even been released yet and uh we ended up giving that to a young man as well uh, and then we had to me a catalogs and stickers and a bunch stickers of others dope. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, some yeah. key some key change, you know just really helping him out. George uh, stopped by, you know, from Tamiya USA and hung out for a little bit, but he obviously had a lot on his plate. And then, of course, we had uh, a number of tank craft items as well in our booth. You know, we had several mats and uh, several sets of their new 3D printed tracks. And uh, we had some that were assembled that people could kind of get their hands on and check them out as well as the sets and a couple of, you know, a glue base and a knife. So, yeah, and then lots of, of course, lots of swag to give away and everything. So that was great. I just want to say a, a big thank you to everybody that stopped by the table. It was really nice just to shake hands, meet people, say hello, you know, put names to faces and stuff like that. Um, it was a great time. It was it was fun for me. I had a fantastic time sitting there. I, I have one thing I'd like to to share that uh, we got this wonderful letter from Andy Taylor. Oh. Yeah. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I mean, he did he did thank thank us and talked about meeting us and all that. Um, but what what really um, stood out to me was this letter says I'll read it for it to you. It says you can tell a lot about people by the company they keep. Plus, their table in the vendor room is all has always collected a great crowd. The Triple P collected great people throughout the, the time in Omaha. Sam Dwyer, Jackson Grizz, Mike, the Minister of Propaganda, Steve, Pat, Aaron, on the, the on the the on the bench gang from down under, the Mojo and their dojo, the model geeks, screw cutters, and the list goes on. Um he he talked a little bit about our group build too, but I mean I, I think that, that that list that he threw out there of people that he met and that he uh, he got to interact with says a lot about our entire group. This whole community is amazing. And and all of you that supported us, um it was it was amazing and a lot of people saw it and a lot of people knew it. Um and it's not us, it's you guys. Hundred percent. You know, Andy yep. Taylor, he's a special one. Yeah. You know, had the opportunity to meet him right when we got there on Tuesday night. He came yeah. to dinner with us. Gracious, gracious man, you know, given a you know, he treated us he brought some great chili beer. Nice spicy <laughs> beer, uh, but he he was just really great to talk to. And you know, my only regret is I didn't get more time with him. And I and I think we probably can all share that sentiment with a lot of people we met there. Where you know, four days is you think is a lot, but there's a lot of good people there you want to talk to. Yeah, and yeah all of them deserve not, the time. Just not enough time. I mean, yeah. there there really wasn't. And um, I'm sure there were people that you know, probably were coming up to talk to us and, and we just didn't get a chance to, to say hi. And, um, you know, we're really, really sorry about that. But yeah, I think it's just, there's just not enough time. We were, we were literally up in the morning at seven, seven thirty in the morning, go until two thirty, three o'clock every night. Um, and there just wasn't enough time. And, you know, I would say guys, if we were maybe 
criticizing what we did. I think maybe at this particular Nats that the podcast, I think we overscheduled ourselves a little bit. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I just think there were so many people that we didn't get a chance to catch up with because we had so much going on. Maybe when we look at San Marcos next year, we approach it a little bit differently. Yeah, yeah sure. every, every day just merged. It was yeah. nonstop, and then it was gone. I still don't know I enjoyed this. I enjoyed every <laughs> second of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Every, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. conscious second. <laughs> you had to get your beauty rest. <laughs> yeah. Well, it goes to a point where I, 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 I was dead to the world. Just... Well, your hair had a personality every day, too. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> There's some pictures from that second seminar. <laughs> you're, you're just, it it like has Kramer. a mind of its own. Yeah, exactly. It's just boom. So, yeah. Uh, now now you understand why I stressed about wanting a hairdryer. I know. You need um, product, your hairdryer. Yeah, and- I forgot product and the hairdryer in the hotel was subpar. So uh, Doug kind of mentioned it briefly a moment ago. Let's talk about the group build. <clears throat> um, it was amazing. And nothing short of amazing. Um, no, we did not win an award. And no, it does not matter. So we're not even going to talk about that. It doesn't even matter. The results were what they were. Didn't change anything about how awesome it was. And that's the that's the God's honest truth right there. It was awesome. We had, what, 70? Yeah. 70 models, I think, was the official count on the table all because of of the six of us and the awesome community that we have and yeah. it really it's more of the community than than it is of us um it's 100 percent the communities and it was humbling tj that's a great point matt made the the comment that when he first heard about the group build and obviously he participated in it it's like oh sherman so you know we're gonna see 70 or what however many olive drab vehicles but you know, the, the dynamic nature of the kinds of vehicles and the finishes and the quality and the workmanship, it was an impressive display. That's, that's putting it lightly, frankly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just humbled by it, you know, like that we had this idea and the community ran with it. They did all the work. Let's, let's, you know, we all contributed models. I'm not going to try to sell any, any six of us short. We all worked hard. Uh, the community did, did everything else. They, they put in the time. They put in the effort to get it, to get their models there, whether, whether it was delivered by hand or flown across the world <laughs> in a custom box. Yeah. I, I, it's, I'm almost at a loss for words. It, it was, and seeing them all on the table was probably one of the greatest things that I could have made. It was bigger than I thought it could have been. Yeah. Than I thought it, it would be. Yeah. It, it was incredible. And I think we need to highlight, you know, from a participation standpoint, the diversity of entrants and the diversity of, you know, the person who entered it. We had people from across the globe on ever, you know, coming from Europe, UK, obviously, and, shipping their models and, and, you know, other models that were hand delivered, you know, Jesse Naughton, I have to call him out, brought his fantastic piece. I believe it's called uh war on two fronts or something, something mm-hmm. very along those lines, uh, you know, with, with the crew. And it, it was just to have that on the table. You had Daniel Brooker's piece that honestly could have competed for best armor. Yep. Yeah. That yeah. Shit was fire. We yeah. got Peter Fidzlotsky's an easy first place winner. Yep. You got Hendrick, you got, John Calasante, you got Joel, uh, you know, sending his, or Robbie Knopf's. The list goes on and on and on for all the folks. You know, Rick Cooper had those beautiful, they were in the back, but it was yep. the, the skink, was it called? Yeah. The yeah. Quad, I mean, and then he had an M4A3, fantastic. Andy Taylor's work, yep. you know, Pat from Ireland, yep. Ireland entry. You know, all of these were absolutely, and then Stephen Reed. I mean, honestly, I, we, you know, we need to get some formal recognition out to these folks. Uh, and there were some that showed up that I didn't even know about. And, you know, they're like, hey, I put my model on the table for your display. It's like, holy shit. I didn't even know we were coming. This is awesome. And to have that was really special. And, and I want our listeners to know that the display did not go unnoticed in the room. You know, a lot of collections, a lot of displays, they're kind of, you know, put in the corner. 
They don't get the attention that, you know, the normal categories get, but I can assure you that it was a constant talking point with people that stopped by our table or people that we met throughout the show where they talked about the Sherman Group entry build and the amount of models, but also the quality and diversity of them as well. So again, a piece of crystal glass at the end of the day doesn't matter when we have a family of modelers. And that's really what it was, a family. It doesn't, it, it, plain and simple, that's it. And And I cannot thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Like TJ said, it's emotional when you stand there and look at everyone that contributed. And if you brought one or five, you guys all have the right to, you know, claim that group entry as yours and, and be proud of it because damn, we certainly were. And another person, um, Matthew Johnston yep. was there. He brought his, um, Sherman two ARV and, uh, he's, I mean, he straight up told me I, I'm only here because of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, that right there, I mean, it, it got him to his first Nats because he wanted to be a, a part of the group build. That is worth, that's worth a million trophies. Yeah. You know, it really is. And, yeah. and I'm, I, and I'm not gonna lie. I was upset when we didn't win a trophy, not because I wanted a trophy, but because I wanted the effort of modelers from literally around the world <laughs> to be recognized for their hard work. But then I thought about it and you know, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And, and everyone that we've talked, because we, there's been a couple posts in the group build group about it. And, uh, the line that I've been using the, the whole time is it doesn't matter. And then everyone's like, yeah, you know, you're right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like Matt McDougal said, the real award is the friends we made along the way. Yeah. And that's, and he's it's cheesy and he admits it, but that's also the truth, which he also said. And it is, I mean, look at the collection of modelers that contributed to the group build. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's just, just amazing builds. World great, class. Yeah. Great people. I, even better from good people just just mm-hmm. good people most important part whitey and frildo you know the 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 jet guys that did sherman's yeah. for our yeah. display and they were both awesome they were you great know, just, yeah. yeah 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 craig craig jarbo same thing you know craig yep, williams craig. doug reed i yep. mean just on and on and on you know people people really um going out of their way to bring these to omaha and take a part in this it was just it was awesome yeah, yeah zach p has got us as you've gone yeah uh and mm. for and, and i think it's you know it's something you know we didn't have an opportunity to connect with a lot of people there but we will we everybody that participated in the group builds gonna get something special and yeah. we'll make sure it gets to you uh we have them and uh we will definitely make sure you get them yep yeah, yeah it was like when we were at the award ceremony and we got nothing. I'll flew me. I I then went to the bar and got a really bad gin and lemonade. <laughs> but then, <laughs> then I realised I was like, yeah, we didn't get out. But what the build did, it got me to build three models I probably wouldn't have previously built as part of basically just call it a big buddy build. Yeah, and it was great. Yeah. I was like, if nothing, it got people to be productive. And yeah, do stuff. and you know, for me, it was. It's going to sound hokey, but. You know, bring in Daniel Brookers, bring in Peters, bring in, bring in all these, you know, modelers that don't typically attend the national convention and put their work on display and have it recognized. I mean, again, you guys, all of them, everybody in the group build, there were, there was always somebody in front of the display looking yeah. and mm-hmm. taking photos. That was not, that was nothing more. I mean, every time I went by to get a photo, there was at least a couple people there. Mm-hmm. And this group build was worth it alone just for Peter's little uh, logo that he did. Oh, for the no, yeah. that, that alone <laughs> made it worth it. Build more shreds. Build more build more st- them, they, them stickers went down well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. So I, I'd also throw it out there as, as people, you know, we kept some of them. So I traded a model for John Calisantes. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about trading later. But I want to throw it out there. You know, if you're coming to San Marcos, Bring your group build, Sherman, and enter it in the regular category because all of you guys are going to make that category damn hard to judge. Yep. <laughs> and it's only fair we do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know Peters will be making the trip again and a few others. So if you are coming to San Marcos and you build a Sherman for the group display, you can enter it under your own name. And I encourage you to, and we would love to see it again because yep. it deserves to be seen. So let's let's talk about what you just mentioned, build trading. And so we're getting kind of towards the end of talking about this. We've been going on and on. 
about the Nats and how awesome it was, which it was. I want everyone to be very clear. It was very awesome. And uh, I think that's, I know we've kind of done it in the past, but it's definitely the the new tradition now. And pretty much, uh, you know, spurred by you, John. And that's uh, build training. And unfortunately, my builds rode in a car with Jackson and Grizz from Omaha back to back home. It's the, also how they got out there. So I was not able to partake. So we will fix that. So tell, tell us about build trading. Yeah. So, you know, build trading is, is exactly what it sounds like. I think it's more popular on the figure side. So MFCA, the Chicago show, they do it all the time. And, you know, this year it, it was, you know, kind of kicked off, you know, Ivan was probably the catalyst where he's like, I'm not bringing anything home. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, cool. And it kind of just happened. I think at the end of the show, I, I wasn't really prepared for anything. And it seemed like, you know, the award ceremonies had ended and everybody's in the contest room. By the way, we, I think we were some of the, we got kicked out of the contest room yeah. at the end. Yep. Uh, Cause we couldn't say, we couldn't connect with everybody we wanted to. We just wanted yeah. to kept saying goodbye to everybody. But at, at that moment, I don't know what spurred it on, but it was like, oh, well, you can have this. Well, oh, well, hey, let me give you this. And, you know, I got to think, you know, probably one of the, a lot of stuff I love that I traded and I actually didn't trade for this one. Sam Dwyer gifted me his King Tiger, which yep. is, will sit in a place of honor for a long, yep. very little, I'll probably be buried with it. Um, <laughs> but like that, I'm, I'm kind of struggling for words because it was something that I didn't really consider until, till this show as something really important. And TJ, as you mentioned, it's gotta be a tradition now because mm -hmm. I, I love to see your work. Uh, everybody on the you know call here or listeners, you know, it's really cool to have someone else's work in your display cabinet because I get tired of looking at mine <laughs> and I am just, you know, astounded at the caliber. You know, I got one of Aaron Cook's award winning modeler. Dumbo himself gave me one. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super thankful. I know TJ, you got some, uh, which ones did you get? I got from you, I got your, uh, Patton with the, mm -hmm. the tiger face on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I also happened to get a, what is it? KV two KV one. It was pouring down rain when I took Ivan back to his hotel. <laughs> and it, when I mean pouring down rain, it was a vicious thunderstorm. Yeah. It was the same one that the OTB guys were talking about. He's like in the group. I was like, man, when it rains in Virginia, it rains. <laughs> um, and we were trying to get, cause Ivan wrapped that thing up with tape and the KV was in the bottom with, with my, the M10 that, uh, Ivan gave me that is fantastic. And the patent. It just happened to fit in there. He's like, you know what? It's pouring out rain. This is going to take forever. Just take it. I'm like, I will do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I did. Not one of my good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. And then I also uh, struck a little bit of a deal with uh, Peter Fislowski, and I get to keep his his Sherman. And oh, it wow. is also in a, a place of honor in one of my cabinets right there with, with your guys' work. And, uh Yeah. That's pretty cool. And I, and I think last year, Scott, I think I gave you my, uh, 148th TIE fighter, right? Yeah. I actually have your, uh, your TIE fighter and also your slave one. Oh, which that's is right. The model, the model that we kind of met, met and became friends over. And I have, uh, John's T3485, the rye filled model. And, uh, I guess Aaron, I obviously Saturday night, I was kind of out, out of action, but I guess Aaron has left me. Uh, one of his pieces that's with John. And I think Ivan left me uh, a certain single engine jet fighter as well. <laughs> and, and uh, just to echo it, I mean, my, my case, having, having the work of people that you care about in your case, what greater honor, what greater, what, I mean, how much cooler could that be than to have a piece of work from one of you guys in there and, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to start stepping up and uh, getting pieces that are, mm. you know, worthy for you guys to take as well. But what a great tradition. I think, uh, like John said, it's got to be a tradition. I think we just kind of make that part of, of what we do moving forward. So, yeah, and I got to thank John Calasante. I had a good talk with him. I'll be sending him a King Tiger in a trade for his grant that he sent for the group build. So I'm, I'm ecstatic to have it. It is damn gorgeous and it'll look great in the display case. 
I got to reach out to Robbie Knopf and see if he's up for a similar deal. And I know the, I was going to read out your name, Ivan, the righteous prick. (laughs) 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 You have on the screen. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I know Ivan has uh, Hendrix as well, so mm. it has a home in the UK. Lucky, and, lucky dog. Yeah, oh, that, that's so good. And it, it got home unscathed. Oh, oh even oh, better. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so nice. Uh, fully <laughs> assembled, the figure on top, it's just like, shit, this guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell everyone, yeah, that's mine, that. <laughs> yeah. So, and, you uh, know, maybe for our listeners, too, you know, if, you, if you're ever down to trade, let us know. If you see it as a show, you know, it's... It's a cool thing, I, I think, and you know, I, again, I don't know what spurred it off, but I got one of Grizz's models too. I'm super yeah. happy about. I think oh. that's great. He's like, I don't know about this. I'm like, dude, I, I want your work. I, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's your first or last. I, I think it's awesome. I gave I gave Jackson last chance. Oh, so, oh wow! Yeah, I miss it. That's cool, <laughs> but uh, he deserves it. He has yeah. bested that model on more than one occasion. <laughs> I I concede. I was like, this, this, <laughs> You own this now, <laughs> literally. So the enjoy. Of yeah, I'm like yeah, you you won, man. I uh, I, I end up getting the the Mayberry. Yeah, so, that's and, right. <laughs> his rightful owner. Yeah, the, rightful. Un, the universe is right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. And that's and it's on a place of honor. I sent a picture out today of it sitting on the thing with uh, some other kits that I've gotten from other people, and it's just it's. You know, it, it's a great, great thing to do. It's so fun. Mm. Yeah. I also got JB's controversially overmodulated border models T thirty four seventy six. Oh, that thing is damn good! Yes, that is so is. nice. That he broke the internet with. <laughs> yes, yeah, he yeah. Did. Drama to the UK. You thought Brexit and your PM <laughs> was, 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 was the hottest thing in the tabloids. Wait, so I put that on our TV news. Yeah, <laughs> the Daily Fail will have that on the front cover. <laughs> Oh, as well as um, a small 72nd armored car. 48. For, is that 48? Yeah, 48. Yeah. Oh, it's small. And that one, you know, that one was my first attempt at black and white weathering. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jose Ruiz from Ammo did the black and white book. And I was like, well, I'm going to try it out. So that was mostly painted and weathered black and white. And then I gave it a very light kind of, you know, kind of what Martin does with his figures with a with a Panzer Gray blue shade. Um, uh, talk <laughs> the way so, it should be yeah exactly yeah. a little little flavor um but yeah it was uh i'm happy you took it because again i went upstairs i'm like oh i got this box full of models you guys want to have a look and i was like i'll take that one and that one <laughs> <laughs> there's so many more i'd love to have taken oh next trip next trip they're all yours nice so, that all was, right uh, well yeah. let's um let's kind of bring bring this conversation home and uh how has the NAS experience, has it helped your mojo? I'm I'm going to assume yes for everyone here, but I'm going to start with Scott. I know you're feeling a little under the weather, but you've got to feel like re-energized model wise, right? Like you have to, if yeah. not you're fired. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I mean, one of, you know, I think we've we've talked about this a little bit on the podcast, but one of my frustrations has just been, um, you know, life gets in the way sometimes not being able to build a lot, but huge mojo boost. I want to talk specifically about something um, that, again, for me has become a little bit of a tradition. I mean, obviously, hanging out with everybody is great, but um, Aaron Cook and I have been friends on the Internet, like so many of us, for a long, long time. And uh, one of the things I was really looking forward to was meeting Aaron in person. And it, it was fantastic. But we walked around the model room together and we didn't judge, but we, we sort of collaborated on individual pieces. And, you know, he would pick one and show me and kind of talk about what he liked about it. And I would do the same thing. It's just an incredible experience to meet a modeler and a friend in person and to kind of share your modeling, you know, TJ, it's very similar to you, you and I, when we started with the slave one builds and, and it really builds a bond. And then I also had that same experience with Sam, you know, I've been an admirer of Sam's work for so long and he could not be a, a better guy. I mean, if he was here, he'd tell me to F off, but <laughs> he could not be a better human being. And, and again, to walk around, that contest room with a friend and talk about what you're seeing and how you're being inspired by it. It can't just 
help but knock the 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 lid off of your mojo meter and uh yeah i mean mine's just so excited to you know get things and get them rolling again and everything so yeah um overflowing overflowing what about you doug well i said this during the during the show was that i couldn't wait to get home and have free reign to build whatever i felt like building so i didn't have any pressure to do any group build although i still have the geeks group build to finish i I'm here and I'm going through my stuff. I've reorganized everything and man, there's a lot I want to do. I really want to build now. Matter of fact, even, even not feeling so hot this week, I've been up till past midnight every night working on something that I should have finished tonight. That, that, uh, Cosmo Zero. But the fun thing was every time I would I'd do one more little thing and then I'd think, okay, I got to stop and go to bed. No, wait, I've got this one more thing I want to do on it. And I would do three or four more things after that. I just keep adding one little thing that I can do. And uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun because I'm excited about doing something like this. And I've got that perfect grade Falcon that's finally going to get some serious work done on it. Here in the next uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be uh, seriously working on that again. So, yeah, I'm excited. What about you, Grant? Yeah, it's it's been fantastic. I, I'm, I, I sat there and looked at the sci-fi table at Nationals. I spent a lot of time around that table and my machine Krieger mojo had gone a couple of years ago. And I look at, you know, Brian's stuff and I look at TJ stuff and I look at everybody's stuff there and I'm like, so beautiful. And it just lit me, lit a fire in me again. And I just, and, and I haven't done any machine Krieger for a long time, but I'm going to do another one and I want to do another one. And I, you know, and I started building this, this AM, AMR 44 and I, it's just, it, it it's like a, a shot of adrenaline, I guess. It's just like this nationals or shows to me. It's just like a shot of adrenaline in my arm because you see this fantastic work and you just want to, you just want to try and meet that standard. And, you know, for me, it's just, I drive for it and I drive for it. And the Sherman build is what motivated me the most. Um, some of those, not some, all of those Shermans from Martin's dioramas in the back to the, you know, the, the Shermans that were in the front. It was just, you know, TJ, you talked about earlier about bringing a, a little bit of a tear in your eye. That's what did it for me. There was a couple of times when I choked up a little bit looking at that table, especially after judging. I looked at that table and I looked at the people and I was like, you know, I, I had a part in this. 70 freaking Shermans on the table. I had a part. It was a small part, but it was a part. And that grabbed me really hard. And that gave me motivation. And that was, that's, I'm, I'm just feeding off of it now. I mean, I think it just it just goes to show that it's, it's the best damn hobby in the world. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Yeah, <laughs> between between what you get to do and and the people you get to to meet and spend time with, I mean, it's the it's it's literally the best. There's yeah. nothing better. But, uh, what, what about you, Ivan? I know you're sad because you had to go all the way back to dreary old England. Yeah, hang out with the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not as fun as she used to be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm motivated to build, hence why today I started a, a new kit. I'm probably 80% through it now. Just looking at the show, this was my first trip to the US, first Nats, and it was I had I I had high expectations, and this just blew them away. This was so much better than I expected, and I really want to try and focus now for this year and the rest of next year to do all my builds fast. That's kind of all I want to do because I know my, it's nice to show my work off, but it's the community thing that I really enjoyed about this year. Being part of something big like that was really nice. So for whatever we have for next year, I want to do more of that. And I want to do more that involves other people, whether it be more buddy builds, more group builds, more whatever. I just want to be more involved with more people doing community builds. Um, that's where I want to take my enjoyment but i'm just doing this quick slammer fresh clean slate build now uh whilst the motivation's high and then we can look at what we want to do next john yeah i'll round it out kind of two things for me obviously the bench clean slate build i have the ersatz m10 I'm gonna rip that hopefully get it primed this weekend but it was my first working nats as well from an ipms perspective so first time i was second vp and i came away from the nats energized at the future of the society. You know, it's not perfect. And I think, you know, some things still need to evolve, but what, what the content, what the show, you know, and what the convention showed me 
is really the health of a hobby. And on Wednesday, I was absolutely floored at the number of people in the convention hall. Usually, you know, they say Wednesday's a slow day. And I think we told Aaron and Ian that, and that's why they came on Wednesday night. But they didn't realize, like, we literally kicked off Tuesday night. And we didn't stop until Sunday morning. For me, leaving the Nats, again, you know, the bench is one thing. But having people reinvigorated to host a Nationals is really something special. Because for 2024, we had one bid. And I was scared to death that we would have zero and we would have zero for 2025. But I'm happy to report that at least five clubs are interested for 2025. Wow. So it's, it's really incredible how I think just it's as hokey as it sounds, you know, positivity brings possibility. If you're positive and you're having a good time, you know, the show isn't perfect. I don't think any of us can admit to a perfect show, but it was a damn fun show and it doesn't have to be perfect to be fun in a great time. I want our listeners to take that away where, you know, there are some bumps in the roads at nationals, whether it's, you know, a hiccup at registration or, you know, contest judging or, you know, a long walk to the parking lot and no food nearby. Those things are the periphery items. I think what's at the heart of the convention are the people that go to it and, and the people that you interact with and they become lifelong friends. And the people that we saw at this nationals, I'm going to do my best in San Marcos to spend even more time with them. I don't know where I'm going to get that time from, but we as a, you know, as a posse, we will have more community events. We will have more community activities leading up to the show. As Ivan mentioned, it's a, you know, whether it's what, what is the next group build and what that looks like and, and who do we involve? And, you know, I'm just really amped about that. I'm amped about people coming for their first time leaving with happiness. And that's what makes me happy. If other people are happy, I'm happy. And this hobby is a happy hobby. And if, if you're not having fun, I think our common phrase is you're not doing it right. And four days was not enough because I could spend weeks with you guys and the people we met because they're the salt of the earth. It gets no better. So I'll, uh, I'll stop talking and pass the torch back over to TJ. <laughs> I agree with everything you just said. 100%. I, I know me personally, I am just full on like rejuvenated, I, exhausted, still very tired, very tired. But model mojo wise, I am, I'm, I'm all in. Uh, you know, I, I started this little, I've never built a freaking airplane before. I threw this thing together. I loved every second of it. I can't wait to finish painting it. I got that going. I met David Hobbs. Awesome. We didn't even mention him, mention him, and I am remiss to, to to do that. And and I apologize, Dave, if you haven't listened to this. Sorry to mention you earlier. Yeah, I met him. Awesome dude. Super cool. Knows everything about Sherman's. I'm like, you're my people, and uh, he is my people. And I reached out to him after the Nats. I'm like, hey man, I found this picture. I want to build this. Can you help me figure out what I need? I know it's a Sherman three. I I just need more information, and he is giving me that information. Because he's just a good guy. He's, he's going to make me a PowerPoint. All the information I need uh, uh, to build this Sherman. I just happened to find a picture of because it looks really cool. Super awesome, dude. I've got that going on. We've got another group build coming up. We're going to talk about that probably here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone knows it's coming. It's the worst kept secret in the world. Um, uh, I am just full on it just, you know, ready to go and. Like you said, John, that week, nine, 10 days we spent together wasn't enough. It really was enough when I mean, I think is when you and I were going back to DC and uh, we said something along the lines of, well, it sucks that this is over, but you know, I guess since we have to wait so long, that's what, what makes it so special. And we're yep. like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, that's BS. That's just what we tell, <laughs> what we tell ourselves to make it feel better when it shouldn't have to be. Cause it, if it could just keep going, it would still be, it'd still be great. It mm -hmm. would, it would be great. You know, I, I, I mentioned earlier, like, and it's hard to explain to people. I just spent 10 days with my best friends who gets to do that as an adult. You know what I mean? Who gets, who really gets to do that? Not very many people, not in this country, at least like who, who gets to set aside a full week to spend with your boys? Not a lot of people. And I, and I am very fortunate that I was able to do that. And Thank you to all you guys because you made my week the, one of the best weeks of my life. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the, probably the best week of my life. 
it, it's not his top three. Yeah, I've uh, I've no hesitation in saying that was the best two weeks. I know I'm only 25, but the best <laughs> two weeks <laughs> of my life, without any doubt. The, the, there wasn't a second in any day where I was thinking, I've had enough now. It's like, no, no that, there, there <laughs> yeah. was no down there, moment. There was enough damn hours in the day. There just, there really wasn't. And yeah. I, Ivan, I'm like you, and, and Scott knows, because I bitch about it all the time. I like going to bed early because I wake up early. I did not want to go to bed early. I was, <laughs> I was tired as a dog, but I was like, man, if I could just hold on for like another hour, <laughs> just, I mean, I, cause I know it's going to be fun. And I'm like, oh, well, I got to get up early. I want to go eat my breakfast and then go start the party all over again. <laughs> well, I mean, even on Sunday before you guys left, we get back from Omaha and we're like, John Everett, are you in town? Are you home? Come on over. Let's have yeah. some dinner. So, yeah, let's, let's eat some pho. Let's go. Let's, let's eat some pho. Let's do this. That, so. that was an experience. Yeah, well, it's because you were eating it with a fork. <laughs> and a spoon. <laughs> and a spoon. It's, it's soup. You don't eat it with a fork. He was very confused, listeners. It, it tasted nice regardless. At least, really, I, at, least really I know, at least I don't mash up my ice cream and cake like a four-year-old. Hey. Hey. <laughs> It was winning all week long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it, it, it was just ahead, great John. to have everybody. No, sorry. I, I was just going to say it was great to, it was great that everybody had a great time too. I didn't see one down person there. Mm. Yeah. There, there's, I was just going to say there just wasn't, there wasn't a frown to be found mm-hmm. yeah. anywhere. Yeah. I have to thank both JB and TJ for being such gracious hosts to me. They didn't have to host me they could have said piss off and find a hotel no um, <laughs> never <laughs> i want exactly. you I, I would love for you to move into my basement <laughs> Same. Who, who's taking weekends <laughs> <laughs> well, you have your heartbeat. summer house you know you have your summer house in dc and then <laughs> you can have your mountaintop retreat out here in colorado <laughs> <laughs> one day <laughs> so, so i i guess now is as good a time as any we, I guess we can go ahead and announce that I guess this would be the 2023 Nationals group build. Holy sh! It's already almost <laughs> yeah. 2023. Yeah. It's insane. So I, we, I don't think we have a clever name for it. We're working on that. I'm going to workshop that over the weekend. But um, again, this is not a surprise. Literally everyone saw this coming. The subject will be Machine and Krieger. Oh, uh, no. Well, who saw that coming? <laughs> that was such a surprise. Because I think almost everyone brought home a Shady Krieger kit from that. <laughs> and we only talk about it literally all the time. So, yes. For Nats, for 2023, we will be building Machine and Krieger. We will have a Facebook group. It will be live when this episode drops. I will set it up that day, probably the night before. We'll be open to join. There will be some ground rules, if you will, because it, it, again, kind of like what we did with the last one, just some basic guidelines, if you will, to keep everything focused, keep not too narrow of a focus, but not to cast too wide of a net. We want, you know, a, a, you'll see, there's, there's not much. Pretty much what it is, it's got to be machine and career. That's pretty much the only rule with a couple of caveats. So all that will be published on the group. I'll probably make another spreadsheet like I did last time. This one will be a little bit different. Build whatever the hell you want. Doesn't matter. You know, there's not, we're not going to call specific kits. You want to build a, I don't know, SAFS, build an SAFS. Who cares? That's the beauty machine in Krieger. Do whatever you want. Yeah. So I look forward to it. Will it be as big as last year's? Don't know. Don't care. It'll be cool. That's, that's pretty much all it is. And I think the, the, the idea we were kicking around is, Judges at IPMS shows be damned. We will judge, quote unquote, judge the entrance. And each one of us will pick the kit that we like the most. And we will have some sort of award to each individual person person on top of the what we will give you for joining like we were doing, like we will do for last year's or I guess this year's, the 2022, which John talked about earlier. We do have something special for everybody. We will continue that tradition next year. So it doesn't matter if we get a trophy, because again, we don't build models to win trophies. We build models to have fun. And that's what this is all about. Machine Grieger's fun. I don't know if all you right. guys can feel free to add anything. <laughs> <laughs> the mill went on sale today. So oh, that's yes, right. Yes, that is and true. It's 24 bucks 
24 euro or whatever it is. It's yeah, like, 25 quid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's nothing. And you, if you want to get them, go to Hobby Link Japan. Japan. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. The one that caught my eye was the one that looks like a humongous gorilla and it's got a suit of armor in its chest. <laughs> It's like, that, yeah, that's cool, but it's 124 quid. Yeah, it's a big one. But Even though I spent, spent more than that on Mac at the show. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. And, you know, okay. I, I, I think Lincoln Wright's going to be stoked about this, too. Mm-hmm. I think we should call it the Lincoln Brian Memorial Build. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, Brian, you know, maybe he can enter, I guess. Yes. Yeah, I guess maybe. We'll maybe. Yeah. Maybe. We got a we'll junior category it. for him. Who does himself at the local level? Then <laughs> yeah. you know, he's got to work his way up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But, I, you know, TJ, maybe one thing to hit on, too, is. I think you said as long as it respects the Machining Krieger brand, anything. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. So th- this will all be in the group. We'll, you know, we'll make a yeah. document, kind of like I did last time. But yeah, the the main I, I hate I hate to say rule. It's not really a rule, but the the main idea is to honor the Machining Krieger property. So pretty much what that means is anything goes if it fits. You know. Anyone that's been around Machine Krieger or has any kind of, you know, general ideas about it knows there is a specific aesthetic that Machine Krieger follows. In that aesthetic, there is tons of possibility, tons of possibility. So pretty much what, what it kind of gets at is, okay, you're not going to build a suit and then put like Hello Kitty on it or not. I mean, you can, not, but not for this. Do that on your own. That's awesome. Go ahead. This we were kind of focusing on honoring Koyokiyama's property of Machine Krieger. That's pretty much the only rule. There'll be some other like minor things that'll all get hashed out. They'll all be in the in the group. And yeah, th- really the goal is build Machine Krieger, have fun because the two things go hand in hand. How many days till next year's Nats? 382. No, 368. <laughs> That'll go quick. I know, this year went quick. So listeners, thank you so much. This episode 50 has been nothing short of amazing to record and, you know, recount some of the glorious stories that we had at the IPMS Nationals. If you want to join in the fun, please come to San Marcos next year. It's early August, 2 through the 5th. We would love to see you there. And to our listeners we saw in Omaha, thank you so much for your time. It was great to see you. Great to meet you. Our only regret is we couldn't spend more time with you. If you have a clean slate build, post it to the Triple P Facebook group. We'd love to see it. We're certainly sharing ours. And we're hopefully going to capitalize on the mojo and momentum after the show and, and just really crank out some models over the next how many days, Ivan? Uh, 368. So listeners, 368 till the next year's Nats. You will hear from us in two weeks, but we will see you then, if not sooner. Can't wait to engage with all of you. Stay safe, stay happy, build more models and have fun. Also, if you're going to add your clean slate build to the Facebook group, use hashtag clean slate build. Because why not? Hashtags are fun. I also love you, Ivan. I love me, Ivan. <laughs> Scott's not saying anything, you know this that. <laughs> aren't aren't you glad you were on the scale model shed, Ivan? <laughs> so much. <laughs> cash or stash. I think I'd cash in on you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that stings. <laughs> I have your stash too. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> wow, <laughs> that'll be getting cashed off. Oh man. <laughs>